Okay, now the mic is working. Good. So we're back with the stream. Working on the on the new project. Let's see where we left off last week. Okay, so we have the tower builder. Oh no, no, that's gonna crash in it. Cool. Okay, so yeah, first of all, we have to do some some updates. We have to get some uh, I think that's the one. Let's see what changed. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's everything. Let's do it. Let's actually put this in progress and um, let's log two minutes for this. Okay, so we updated this framework to the latest version. Now we're gonna do some cleanup in the code from what we from what to, from what I did last week. So let's start checking time for this task. Okay, so it's clean up time. Okay, cool. So uh, let's make this. Uh, how do I do it? Like this. Five, one. Yeah, that's better. Cool. So yeah. So let's look at the to do list and see what we have in code. Actually, not a lot. Five to do. Uh, five to do. Um, okay, so we'll have to rename this. Okay, this is. Uh, let's see. So. Let's see if it's gonna break stuff. I'm not sure if the serialization will still work if I change the name of the struct. It should work because it has the same... Yeah, looks fine. Yeah, we still have data. So, yeah, okay. So, one down. This is a port. Let's see. Make those private and expose them through properties. Yeah, that does make sense. So, let's do that. Ah, this is gonna be... Yeah, this is gonna break stuff. For sure. Actually, it might not. If I so it's gonna be in, and we add this attribute, so we should be fine. Yeah. So that's public, and it's like that. Let's see if it still keeps the data. I should look at the combined data because that that one has. Yeah. So we still have in data. So now what we can do is say this is a private and it's serializable so our serialized field and it's gonna scream because I'm using the import so now let's do that that property so it's a port, uh, port array port array called in and it returns this mm, I wonder if I should make it uh, so I don't wanna I don't wanna be able to to, ch to change the the values in the port so I, I want it to be kind of read only um, 
I'm not sure if we have Let's see if we, if we have a read only arrays. I'm not sure if you, if that's a thing. Uh, C sharp. Or at least the type for it. Yeah, so ah. Uh, so it is a different type, but I have to to cast it as such. Yeah, I might just make it an I enumerable. I don't th think I'm gonna need the length anywhere. So it's an enumerable of port. Let's import this. And let's see if someone needs that. So ah yeah, so we need it to be an array. No, actually no, no, no no no. It's complaining because I use the private field. But yeah, here I use the length. So that's no good. Yeah, I might just might just return it as a hmm. Oh, are you doing a collection? Let's look at this. This might be exactly what we wanted. But I wonder if I can <coughs> just cast an array as a as a read only collection and it's just gonna work. I might just have to do this. Which I don't really want to. Yeah, let's try it, but I'm not, I'm I'm sure it's not gonna work. So where does this come from? Some random place. Okay, yeah, and now it's complaining. Yeah, I'll have to make a new a new instance of this class and pass in. But yeah, I don't I don't want to do that because that's that's gonna be insane. I don't want to make a new instance each time. I don't think I want to store it. I'm. Uh, it, I'm quite sure yeah, it's not gonna be serializable anyway so so I'd have to do something custom for that so I actually I don't I don't have to keep it I can create it every time but then I'd have to have a null check or something which also is not great hey Robert yeah yeah I I woke up at like seven I think so you woke up late but I guess you were streaming last night so maybe that's why yeah let's just let's just send it as a as an array and just be done with it and let's make the same uh, actually no first I have to rename this come on let me get back into unity like a normal human being Jesus it's not like during the week you you wake up early because you have to go to work I just woke up the same as any other day so I do wake up like a human being Let's look at the split data. Okay, so we still have the data, so we haven't lost anything. That's good. Let's make this private. Let's make this a serialized field. And let's create the out property. So everyone should be fine except for this one, because I have to do this. There's still another error. Okay, so there's an error. Oh, I wonder if, oh, I might have just tricked myself because of the errors, the code was not compiled, so I was looking at the previous, uh, the 
the previous compiled code before the change. I might have seen the. Hmm. Let's hope I'm not gonna lose data because I don't want to make the modules again. So this is an out. This is in. This is out. Okay, so I guess those are all the errors. Hopefully, yeah. And now, yeah, we still have data. Uh, that's amazing. Let's remove the special attribute because we don't need it. And the to do. Good. Change this. This will be. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna do this in a in a later task because it's gonna be a bigger change. Yeah, this function. We have to put it somewhere else, in a common place or somewhere. I'm not sure where I should put it. Hmm. Cache the splines. Uh, yeah, yeah, I should catch the splines. What is this? This is a tower module. Why am I? Why do I need uh, the splines for? Is it for rendering or? So get splines for import. Generate three routes and add splines to tree. Yeah, yeah, I should, I should cache. I should for sure cache the splines. Or should I? Hmm. I mean, it, it will help at the runtime because I would, every time I spawn a new module, I won't have to to look for those splines. But then again, I'll have to make sure that I always have. I always have uh, up-to-date information in the cache and I don't know how to do that because the spline is, the spline is on, a, on a child element in the module so how would I know if there's a new if there's a new spline hmm I'm not sure what I should do what I should do here where was that to do here But yeah, but hmm, how should I do this? Or actually, should I do it now? I'm thinking of leaving this like this and just deal with it later uh, if there's any problem of uh, performance. So I would have a place where I could just um, get some more performance out of. But right now, I'm not sure how to deal with this. Or how to keep it sync with whatever is in the module. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And just come back to it later. Okay, so back to this function. So so the problem with this function is that we have it here and there's uh, I have it in another class as well so I'll have to let's see yeah so it's in the spline so we have the same function in two places I should put it in a in a common in a common place But I'm not sure where I should put it. Might just make a class in tower that holds this. Because I'm not sure where I should put it. So it would be like uh, something like tower, tower utils or something. Yeah, let's do it like this. It's gonna be a static. It's just—it's only gonna 
hold the function and that's it. So let's copy this, let's paste this. Uh, it's not going to be private, it's going to be public and static. Vector tree from Unity Engine, and we also need. Oh, so we need two things. We need the tower data, and we need the position of the module. Hmm. Let's look at how this function is used. So, first of all, it's using splines. What is the okay so we add the root position to whatever there is and in here so this is the, the actual tower module yeah so we'd have to pass in the the root position and also the tower data or or the, hmm, the tower data or should I just pass the path radius I might just pass pass in the path radius and get it get it from wherever Maybe I don't have tower data in other places, so... Okay, so let's do it. So we're gonna have a vector 3, which is the root position. Let's just delete this now. And we're gonna have a... Float, which is the path radius. And let's just replace this. So it still compiles. I may just have to. Hmm. I should look into adding some documentation to this function. Because it's. Unless you look at it, it's not going to be obvious that the angle is. Um, or should be in degrees. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I was not expecting this kind of thing. Okay, so that's good. Um, path radius. The Uh, so what that uh, so it's a cylinder is that correct hmm, maybe uh, and go and go in the in degrees and height the y of the point of the waypoint okay okay so we have this let's try to replace let's see where where is this used in a couple of places okay so let's start by Let's duplicate the line and just do tower utils tower utils dot waypoint to position and so we, so we need the transform that position and also the tower data dot path radius let's just copy yeah let's copy all of this and paste it here. Let's cache the transform position. Root position and let's just get it out of the for loop because it's not gonna change. Uh wait, 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 wait. I can put it actually here. And let's just delete this. Let's put this on two lines. Yeah. yeah, that should do it. Let's see if it works. So this is the... I 
actually I can already see it so so is the the rendering for the spline and this works so yeah looks fine good so one down a couple more to go I think there were two more um, in this file oh actually no just one yeah because I had two in the other one okay so let's return actually actually I don't have to do anything I could just get this and just paste no uh, paste this yeah and that did it that does make sense that looks actually better yeah let's do it like that okay now now we can remove the function from here nice okay so we have done that let's get back to this one and let's see how many times is this one used only once that's amazing let's see if we can get away with just pasting the same thing um, actually we did which is amazing but actually I want to save this position so it's gonna be the same for each uh, point in the module so let's do it like this yeah Cool. So now I can just remove the function. Nice. Let's get into splice actually back. Um, let's see if you can make this look more pretty. Let's. I already have a from. So let's say this is actually from position. to position okay let's add some spaces uh, let's just make this look better um, next angle and next height okay yeah there was another one but I don't need I don't have to do anything here this this looks this looks fine cool so we only have uh, there are only two to do's left so this 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 plan one I'm just gonna keep it like this for now and this other one is gonna be a bigger change and uh, I'm gonna do it in another task um, Actually, I, I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it today, but uh, a bit later. Okay, so let's see if it still works. Let's play this game. Okay, so where's my tower builder? Here it is. Let's say I want five modules, and we still have the tower. And yeah, cool. So it still works. Let's make another tower. Let's make it a 10 module tower. Yes. Cool. It's gonna split. It's gonna combine right here. Split again. Nice. Cool. Okay, so...
let's close this task. 23 minutes, nice. I allocated one hour for this. I thought there were more um, changes to be made, but there weren't a lot. Let's actually let's split this into two changes. So first one is this, and it's gonna be this task. Then is this one it's gonna throw everything. Um, wait, what have I changed here? Oh yeah, I rename the port. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, so this is fine. Okay, so this task is done. Let's do some changes to the to the modules and the in out ports. Okay. Okay, so one thing that I like to change is let's get into one module. And let's see how it looks. So right now you have a module and you have uh, you have an in and an out port for each or at least one in one in and one out and you can put it wherever uh, let's look at the out you can put it wherever uh, at the top at, at whatever angle you want but actually, I want to limit this to only have like maybe six or eight um, places where you could put this uh, this port, so that it's easier to combine modules and not have uh, not have a lot of modules. So what I'm going to do, so uh, let's look at the module data. I'll have to, so, so this is the port. Yeah, I wonder if the range, uh, is this, uh, is this from, it is not from, um, from Odin. So I'd like a, a, a range, but I, I I think I know there's a, a range attribute that uh, for it you can specify the the step increments for 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 changing this. So you would have only you could specify like okay I want it from uh, in increments of 45, and it's gonna prevent you from from uh, choosing anything in between those. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure how it's called, so I'll have to look for this. Let's get uh, the chat back up, okay? So there's a property range. I'm not sure if this was what I want. Yeah, it still has only min max. Ah, uh, I might know. Um, not sure if this is what I actually need. Uh, can I see some? Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, so so this one still doesn't do it. So we have a min max. I don't know what the segment it does. I'm the drawing tiles, yeah, that doesn't help me. And this is a, yeah, this is a bull, so it doesn't, doesn't help. But I'm quite sure I saw that somewhere, but I, I don't remember. I don't remember where. I for sure saw it somewhere. Where you could specify a, a step value. 
but I haven't used it. But I for sure saw it somewhere. Let's look through the attributes. Maybe maybe there's something that stands up from. Yeah, this is nice. Huh, this is actually cool. This is actually cool. I, I had no idea <coughs> this was a thing. <sighs> the min max slider is not helpful because this is for vector 2. But man, I for sure saw it somewhere. God damn it. I don't know where. Actually, let's just search for it because I mean, I have, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I wish, I wish to be able to to do this easily, but um, yeah. So Unity you know, uh, range attribute. Uh, I really want step. What should I? Um, oh, so there is a step. Wait, what's this? Probably since I'm more. I mean, I could just use this. Well, I'm not sure if it's gonna play nice with Odin if I use this. <coughs> but yeah, for sure I could use a, a custom drawer for the for that property. But but yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, let's just copy this code and just try it out. Let's see where we can put it. So, hmm, where should I put it actually? Should I make an? I should make an editor uh, editor folder here, like a global one maybe. Uh, I know. Let's make a another folder. Let's call it what's this? Step range, maybe. Uh, just actually, yeah, step range. And that's the folder name, and let's do a class step range drawer. Cool. And let's just copy this, I guess. Um, and I'll have to do the attribute so it doesn't. Okay, so we have this. This looks like shit. Let's format this. Yeah, that's better. And let's make the attribute to step 
range attribute. Let's just copy this. Uh, actually, not all of this. Only this part. And let's format this to cool. Let's import whatever he wants. Um, so yeah, inherited yellow, multiple false. No, I don't need that. Let's import everything here too. Let's remove this useless thing. Also useless. This should be... Wait, but that, this doesn't make any sense. Actually, if it's an int in your device... Yeah, no, actually, that's that's fine. What is it? Actually, what? No, what, what step? So it's still an int. Shouldn't it be, this be cast to a float? Hmm. You don't need base here. Okay, let's try it. Let's see what it does. Um, so let's hide this and let's say step range and I can't see it. Why is that? Why can't I grid type step range attribute? But I uh, he's complaining because because I put it in a in an editor, in an editor folder. The drawer should be in an editor folder, but the attribute shouldn't be, because this does, doesn't have anything to do with the editor. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, let's switch this up a bit. So let's make a new trials for folder. Let's move the step range into utils. Let's get this editor folder inside of the step range and just move the drawer and let's look at the namespace and make it look pretty. So we have this, it's not going to be in the editor. Okay, let's copy this, let's go to the drawer and this is going to be in the editor. Okay, now sh it should be fine. It should be able to find it. Uh, or, well, I guess I have to go to Unity first. Maybe. Or not. Come on, Unity. Yeah, now it should be fine. I sh should be able to find it. Why doesn't he see it? What the heck? What? No, this is not mine. Ah, oh, because I haven't changed the, the class name. Jesus. So this is step range and this, sh yeah, this has the same problem. So let's do it like this and this is step range. Yeah, no, it's fine. So we're gonna do 0 to 359 and the step is Let's say 45. Let's see how this does. Um, method must have a return type. What the heck? Yeah, because I changed the class name. This is the constructor. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, okay. I saw the... Cool. Nice. 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 This works. This actually works well. Let's try to put the height label back. Let's see if it plays nice with Odin. I 
I mean, it put the degrees here, so it should play nice. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Can I make it like... Oh, yes, I can. Oh, that's nice. So I can clearly see how many divisions there are. Cool. And I think one last thing I could do is make it a bit prettier. So, so this is the maximum, but the maximum is actually shit. Because if it's larger than the... So in this case, we have uh, the maximum is uh, uh, 359. But I can only reach 350. 315. Um, I should... Uh, I should cap the maximum, even though I specified it like this. I should cap it so that it looks like the the range goes all the way to the end. I mean, it should look prettier. Okay, so let's try doing that. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, so we're gonna... Um, yeah. Actually, no, I can't do it. So, oh no, I know how to do it. So it's maximum minus uh, maximum um, mod step. So we get the reminder from the from the maximum, and just subtract that, and we should get exactly what we want. So, boom, yeah. So now the maximum is 315 instead of um, 359. Yeah, and now the question is, do we have, or are eight exits enough? Let's see. So there's the one step, two steps, three steps. Yeah, I think there are enough. I don't think another one, so so getting another port in between each one, I think the, uh, it would be too much. Yeah, I think opt is, uh, 8 is okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it like this. Let's actually remove all the... Du -du 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 -du. No, I need one. Cool. Good. Okay, so we have this. We've done this. Um, let me stop my timer. Limit position. Yeah. So so I did this. Um, 18 minutes. Yeah, that's cool. I allocated 30 minutes for this, but cool. Let's. Let's see what changed. So we made some folders. We added the step range, and we changed the tower module data. Yeah, that that looks fine. Okay, let's publish this. Let me put the task on done, and let's get the other one. Okay, uh, another one, another thing that I want to do is for the splines. So right now we have, uh, you, de you define a spline by setting waypoints and each waypoint is uh, made out of an angle. So where along the, the, the tower 
is the is the point and also a height. Um, I can increase it. Yeah. Wait, what? Why can't I increase the, the height? Oh yeah, because uh, the first uh, waypoint should always be at zero. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, uh, what I want to do is um, change the angle so it is um, so it's um, what do you call it? Uh, it's an int instead of a float, so that it limits the possibility of errors. But yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I want to do. Actually, we can do. Um, actually, no. I was thinking of the the wrap attribute that we saw earlier. But actually, I like that we can we can go beyond 360 on the angle and do something like this. I think this looks dope. This this would be like a an interesting uh, let's call it a buffer module where you would have a lot of enemies um, in a in a short uh, on a single on a single module. So you could, you could have a lot of weapons along the along the paths but yeah so what I want to do is change the change the angle from a float to an int and that's gonna be interesting because that will I'll have to I want to keep all the data from all the modules I don't want to recreate all the modules But let's see how we can do that. I think I'm gonna do it this manually. I don't think I have a, an automatic way of doing it. So I'm gonna do it angle, let's call it angle float. Let's let Unity compile this. Okay, so we have this. All our modules should be still intact. Uh, let's discard changes. Yeah, so the modules are still intact. And now what I can do is create another angle, but this one is an int. And I'm just gonna go through all the all the modules and copy the data from the float to the int. And just then delete the float. Okay, so let's take each one. So this is no, uh, I have to go here. So this is fine because it's a straight line. Uh, this is gonna need some adjusting. Wait, what? Damn! Actually, I, actually, I don't have to do anything. Okay, that's that's cool. So the thing is, this float thing was called yeah was was called float uh, was called angle before. And now I change it to this, but uh, Unity still has data for its old name, the angle. And now, just, uh, now that I assigned, uh, or that I created another, another field with the same name, I guess Unity just took the data that was previ previously in this and just put it in the int. So I don't have to do any copy pasting. But what I have to do is check that the data is is correct because yeah, it those are two data type so they might not behave the same so yeah so it's the same data in both uh, both fields here too what's this is it go combine let's see 180 this looks fine and this also looks fine okay so actually I don't have to do anything what I have to do now is let's see where this is used and it's just in a couple of places Okay, but what I can do actually, okay, so I changed the spline and I can just get the old data in like this. Or ba So basically I just uh, reverted the changes that uh, Unity made. So now instead of using the the angle float, I use the angle, which is the new one with the int. So let's save this. Let's see if Unity screams. No, it's okay with this. I have, to, uh, I will have to double check all the all the calculations because now we have ints, and if we have some divisions somewhere, it might not work out great. 
Uh, but first of all, let's get some more music here. Um, what should we listen to? Let's do some downplay because I'm. Yeah, let's do this. And let's get OBS back on. Okay, cool. So, um, let's see. What's changed here? Yeah, so we want this. Um, come on. Let's save it. This file should disappear. Cool. And let's get into the Tower Builder 2. And yeah. Save. Close. Cool. Let's clear this. And let's look one last time at this. So, yeah. Yeah, this looks fine. And now what I have to do. So, so, so the angle foot is no longer used, that's why it's grayed out, so I can just remove it and also remove some of the imports. Okay, so theoretically it should be all fine, but just in case let's look at the angle and all the places it's used in and just be sure that we don't do any divisions. So it doesn't break anything. So just a lerp, it's a lerp. Uh, Denta angle should be fine. Also Denta angle. So yeah, cool. So no, um, yeah, no divisions. So it doesn't matter if it's an int. Cool. Let's uh, let's try to see if it works still. Tower builder. Let's make a 10 module tower. Damn, still works. Except that it doesn't. Something's weird here. Okay, so something's wrong on a 180 module. Actually, on a lot of modules. Yeah, okay, so we, we did break something but I don't think we broke it in this hmm I think we broke it in this uh, with this change I think it's it's from the the previous one because it looks like all the all the outports are are messed up except for the straight piece which seems to be fine what is it there it might be the imports okay something is definitely wrong let's check all the modules so the straight the straight piece is fine let's look at the split okay so the split is not fine okay so something happened with the out and I think I think I know exactly what happened so someone was, comp was complaining here that the value was getting reset and someone offered the fix the value resetting when triggering game mode. Yeah, so I saw that, but I just ignored it. Let's see what they changed, though. Let's compare with our version. Actually, let's just copy the whole class and just see what it does. Okay, I think this is all I need. And this is the this is a drawer. Okay, so let's paste this method. Uh, let's format it because it looks like shit. Okay. I don't need a base. Okay, let's see what changed. Let's uh, go to Unity. Let's go to Unity where is um, Collaborate. And let's see what changed um, in here. Also the value. Oh, it does make sense. Yeah, it actually does make sense. But what? why does it need a value, actually? Why does it keep it in there? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, so the problem is... The problem is that um, it 
was using the private int value here and it was using it uh, to pass it back to the int slider whenever the function was called and uh, this is not serialized so whenever the whenever unity reloads uh, um, this value uh, was reset to zero so yeah it does make sense but right now i don't think this makes sense anymore because i can just declare it here so i can just do this and i don't need that or do I? What does it say here? I wonder why if it's why it's um, why does it have an underline? Anyway, but yeah, that that's the that's the that was the problem. It does make sense. So you get the value. You. But I still don't like this this division here. This should totally be cast to float. And it's gonna complain, but that's not a problem because we do a mass f um, floor to int here. Uh, why does it complain? Yeah, I need another one here. Yeah. To me, this looks uh, way better. Or, or like we uh, lose more correct okay let's try it let's see what uh, yeah so I remove that and I change this okay cool let's see what happens here it's weird that let's save yeah so yeah all the all the modules have been not changed okay let's reset all the modules we should get the, the data back, hopefully. Okay, let's get into split. Okay, we don't have the data. We have to set it again. Okay, so this should be at 90 and this should be at 270. Okay, one down, let's do the combine, this should be at 90, this should be at 270, and the 180, I think the reversed one might be, actually no, both, both would have this problem, so the import should be at 180. This should be 180. Yeah, cool. So we have fixed the modules. Let's play it again and make a tower. So 10 modules. Looks fine. Yeah, looks fine. Let's build a couple more. Yeah. Yeah, looks to be fixed. Cool. So what we've changed now is that we... On the, on the splines, we now have ints here instead of floats. So this should uh, limit the possibility of error when creating modules. Damn, this looks nice. <laughs> Ooh. Nice.
nice patterns. And I have a star. Cool. Let's get let's get this back to zero. Okay, so hello Morhan. How are you? Let's mark this um, task as complete. And let's move to something else. Okay, so modules, modules, yeah. We change those, we change. Let's look at the another spline. So we change this into a, an int. We removed some garbage. Yeah. Okay, let's do, yeah, so next what I want to do, um, it's uh, improve the, the tower build a little bit. So right now, whenever you construct a tower, you start with a random piece, and then the tower just builds up from there. What I would like to do is have a way of remembering so, so the first time it would be random, but uh, I would like to expand the tower. So I'll have to to save um, to save this last module somewhere, and then have a have a button that I can press and just uh, increase the the size of the tower by whatever however many modules I want. And so, so basically, instead of starting from a random uh, from a random module, I would start from the last one I generated. So yeah, that's that's what I would like to do. So yeah, man, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. So let's get into the tower builder and let's see what we've done here last time. So we have the build function which takes uh, si the size of the or how, how many modules do we want and it does a lot of stuff here. I mean not a lot of stuff but yeah. So yeah so we have this. This is Actually, this starting module doesn't make any sense. But it is. It make it makes sense in the tower builder, but not in the tower manager or the modules manager. So I might just rename this to get random module. This makes yeah, this makes a lot more sense to me from the perspective of this class. Okay, so we have this. And what I would like to do is save the um, tower module data. So we're gonna save the tower module data. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, we have to save the tower module data. Is the last module let's realize this let's make it read only because we don't want to interact it with from the editor and after so those are the modules but this is not actually what I want because this one returns me the tar module not the data itself actually no so so this is not actually what I want what I want, so so there must be a yeah. So this is oh, 
Okay, so I'm so in this for loop I'm assigning the current module. I'm always assigning the current module. So after the for loop, the current module should have the last module that that uh, that was spawned. Okay, so we have the last module. Let's cr uh, let's create the. Ah, come on. If we don't have a last module, we can't expand, so we're not gonna do that. But actually, hmm, how do we do that? I might just have to make a function that, so the expand function might get an int, uh, a size, and the start module. Tower module data start module and I might just copy the whole thing here. Another delete tower, another current module. Yeah, this thing. Actually, I need a current module, but I'm not gonna assign it to that. wonder if I can do this. I might not be able to do this. Yeah, because it's not a, it's not a constant. Yeah. So what I have to do is make a and size. Actually, I can make it one liner expand of si uh, size and this and now actually do we need the last module um, mm, how do I do how do, how do I want to do this so it's good this is gonna be internal so I might just make it internal actually. Let's let's call it like this. Okay. So what I can do now is call internal expand of size here. So the build function is gonna delete the tower and expand it. Actually, delete tower should also make the last module null so that it gets a random one. Which means also this should be like this. So you have the current module is the store module, and in here. We're gonna do last module if it's uh, if it's not null. We're gonna do the last module. Otherwise, we're gonna get a random one. Why does it complain? Because this has to be a yeah like this. There, this is spelled wrong. Uh, rename all. There, no, there's an end here. Okay. So we have the build, we have the expand. Actually, this might, this, sh I, I think this shouldn't be a, yeah. Yeah, this shouldn't be an overload, and it's gonna be—it's still gonna be private. 
but I'm gonna attach a button to it. Actually, this this will be a public. This will be a public sometime. Yeah, do it like this. Uh, this is expand actually. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, actually there is a there is one problem. So so we're gonna get a new tower, uh, starting with the last module, but it's not gonna be on top of the old tower because I don't save the last position of the uh, of the last module. So I might just have to do that. Um, something like save the the tower size. So that I don't know where to start from uh, the next time I expand. So let's build. Actually, I, I think I can. Yeah, I can expand. Actually, the build function. Yeah. So let's do. Let's let's make it two modules. So I can make it two modules, and it made me a spiral, and then I can invoke it again, and it made me. Um, so it's the split. No, 180, 180 reverse. Yeah. Um, can I get it at the center? Can I not get the enemy? Yeah. So it should actually be here. Or not. Okay, it doesn't look. This doesn't look right. Uh, I think I've, do I've done something wrong. Anyway, uh, I don't know why it doesn't look right, but I know exactly what I have to change here. So, let's also end, and this is tower size. Uh, uh, yeah, tower size, yeah. So, whenever we expand, or more like after we expand module height i plus one plus the tower size and after we do this um, the tower size is going to increase by the size okay and in the delete last module is none and the tower size is zero okay so now if you try it again we should get the next modules be on top of the on top of the old ones okay let's in, let's expand it by two okay so we have two modules let's expand it by another two and that failed but why did that fail? Well, wait, 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 wait. It not only failed, one module is at the bottom and one... Oh yeah, it does make sense. So the first module is created outside of the for loop. Yeah, so it's here. And I bet you this zero is what I have to change. Yeah, because that's the height. So it's not a height of zero, but a height of module height times the tower size. Yeah. That should do it. Okay, let's try it again. Tower Builder, let's expand it by two. Okay, so we have two modules and here's the next two. Awesome. And now we just have a problem. We just have a problem. So last time we created Yeah, we created those composite splines, which basically what they do is let's make a let's make a bigger tower. 
So what those composite splines do is combine each spline from each module to make one path that goes from the bottom to the top. And that's, this does work when you create a tower the first time. But as we did uh, previously, if we add, let's say, just one, one more module. Okay, so this failed. Hmm, interesting. I wonder why this failed. Because this should work. Oh, I know exactly why. Damn it. Okay, okay, I know why it, why it failed. Um, but yeah, so, so the problem is that, yeah, we expanded the tower again and we created a new composite spline for only this new part of the tower. So, yeah, we should, we should theoretically recalculate all, the, all those uh, composite splines and make a... Uh, Hmm, make new ones, which might be hard to do. I mean, we, to recalculate all of them, we'd, we would have to keep track of all the modules. I mean, it, it, it would be simpler to just uh, recreate all of them instead of using the existing ones and adding, adding to them. Hmm. But yeah, right now it's not a problem, but I, I, I see a problem. I see this problem coming up in the future. Because right now the, the idea is that we're going to make a tower of like, let's say, size 10 or 10 modules. And then you're going to play on this tower. Uh, and uh, after a certain, amount of, a certain amount of waves, you'll be able to expand the tower. So you'll be, yeah, you'll do an expand of another, let's say, ten pieces, and you you won't be able to play on the lower part of the tower. So th this will be locked, and you you will only be able, be allowed to play on the on the on the new part. So having the splines combined is not uh, won't be an issue, or more like not having them combined is not going to be an issue. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm, 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 um, I'm not gonna fix this now. But what I'm gonna fix is so so we had a problem. Let's make a tower of one module, and let's yeah, so it's perfect. We have a we have a 180 exactly what I wanted. So if we expand it once, we're gonna we're gonna get the same piece. So because in the code what we did in the so, so in the in the expand function, what we call is call, we call the internal expand function, which says, okay, if we have a last modules, uh, last module, use this. Otherwise, get a random one. So the random one would we would use the random one in case we build a, a fresh new tower. But uh, in this case, right now we we have a last module because we build it once and we want to expand it. So we're gonna we're gonna just pass the last module. But the problem is that. The first module we're gonna sp we're gonna just spawn it, and that's not correct because uh, we don't want to use this module. Um, yeah, we don't wa we don't want to use this module to to, yeah, to start spawning the tower. We we want to know about it so that we know what what piece should go next. So instead of passing the last modules, we should we should do it as in the four, uh, as we have in the four. We get all the possible all the possible modules that can come after the last one and just choose one of them. So we don't pass the last module as is. We we get uh, we have to get another module based on this. So let's make this two lines of code. Let's make a function out of this. Uh, private uh, tower module data get next 
is get random next module and tower module data module and just copy this those two lines of code instead of this let's just return return and this is the module okay and here we can do current module equals get random next module for the current module so we don't need those two lines of code and now we can use the same function here and instead of passing the last module we get a random next uh, a random uh, a random module based on the uh, on the last one so let's try this let's hope we get the 180 piece so we can test with it uh, build perfect so we have a 180 so what i expect now is get the 180 reverse which it's the yeah it's the, the, the this uh, the continuation of this module so let's expand it by one boom perfect so yeah we just get modules like this there we go nice yeah, so it works now. It works. Uh, it works uh, correctly. Happy to help. What the hell? So ju the Google Assistant just uh, started talking. What the hell? It's just oh, okay. That was weird. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So we have this functionality. So now we can expand the tower. We we know we know what the tower looked like um, from the first build, and we can expand it further. So that's gonna help us. Uh, that's gonna help us in the game uh, whenever you complete uh, a certain amount of waves, and you wanna continue to the next level. Cool. What I might do now, actually, no, I'm gonna keep it like this. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that's that's done. Let's just do some cleanup here. Oh, I don't like that. That random. Let's remove this. That's garbage. Okay. Cool. So this task is done also. Let's mark it as done. 22 minutes. A little bit. Um. Uh, more than what I estimated. So I estimated 20 minutes for this. But given the fact that I talked on the stream, I mean, talked to myself. But yeah, yeah, this, this is this is good. Let's commit this. Actually, let's look at the uh, code one last time just to be sure that we don't commit something weird. Okay, so we changed this name. That's that's correct. And let's look at the tower builder. So we removed some imports there. We added those two fields. We added the expand function. Yeah, it looks fine. Cool. Let's commit this. And yeah, now we're gonna we're gonna get into 
something a bit different but uh, I'm gonna talk about it uh, after a short break I'm gonna be back in like two minutes be right back Okay, I'm back. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different right now. So we have a problem. Or, yeah, we have a problem right now with, with what we've done uh, last week. So uh, let's look at the tower module data. So right here, yeah, so this is the to do that I talked about earlier so we have this uh, for the tower module data which is uh, which are those files where we specify the in and out ports for each module we also specify the the um, uh, the, the prefab for the for the module so we know what to spawn in and this looks fine except for the fact that whenever you load the data in memory because there's a hard reference to the to the prefab the prefab also will load in memory even though you you don't need it or you don't need it yet but unity is going to load it for you just in case and that's not good because let's take the let's take an example for the yeah let's let's say we we build a tower and we have a piece so we have the first piece and we want to know uh, which uh, which pieces the which uh, which pieces are um, or should follow should should follow this one. So what we have to do is look at all the modules and see which are compatible with the current one. And just by just by having those or looking up through all those modules, um, you would basically load all the all the module data in memory and 
this will uh, also load the uh, also load the the prefabs which is not good because yeah let's say right now it's not an issue because we have like uh, what like five modules so it's not a, 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 it's not a big problem that we we have we we load them but let's say we have 100 modules or 200 modules with uh, so so right now the modules that we have are are simple so it's just a cylinder and some just a path which is like nothing but think about a module where we would have a lot of details put into it uh, all the things about uh, about the weapons that we're going to have on the on each module all the visual details and stuff so that's going to be a a, a big uh, a, a big prefab because it's going to load up uh, materials it's going to lo uh, load up textures and whatnot so yeah having like 200 uh, um, 200 modules loading in memory is not going to be that pretty and uh, yeah I would like to address this uh, early on so what I would like for this uh, for this new project is to use addressables it's a it's a package from unity that basically lets you package uh, certain files like textures and shaders and whatnot, prefabs, whatever, um, package them in uh, in some kind of bundles. Let think of them as uh, archives or something. And you can uh, just load them whenever you want. So you have mo uh, you have uh, functions uh, with which you can um, you can load those uh, those assets on those assets on demand. And you can just store them wherever. You can have them on on disk uh, next to your game. You can have those uh, those asset bundles. You can have them on on a server somewhere. And uh, the same API that you use to to get them would just uh, happily get them from wherever you specify and uh, load them in memory and have them available to use. But we're not going to get into that right now. One thing that I want from 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 all of this, uh, they have a, they have a thing called uh, I think it's uh, asset reference or something like that. And what basically what that does, instead of having a hard reference to 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 an asset, uh, they have a, a weak reference based on uh, GUID. So so each element each uh, each file in, in your project has a GUID attached to it and uh, what that uh, does is basically okay instead of saving a reference to this and having unity serials that uh, it only saves that GUID which is unique per file so there won't be any two files with the same GUID and they just save the GUID and whenever you want that asset um, they'll just uh, have to look up uh, which file corresponds to, to that specific uh, GID and just load it from disk. So that's uh, that's what I would like to do. Because in this case, you I would just happily look at all the modules and have that uh, and know that I won't load uh, any modules because I'm not I'm not loading. If if I don't need that uh, the prefab. The system is not gonna not gonna load it into memory. It uh, it will just have uh, that uh, reference to the GUID of the of the asset. So yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna try to do now. I haven't uh, I haven't worked with this uh, yet, so I I've looked at the doc uh, the documentation a bit, but uh, yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with the API. So this is gonna be interesting. So let's start simple. Let's just keep the code as is and just uh, add something uh, next to it and see how we can how we can use it. So let's just start with the public because it's uh, gonna be easier. So uh, actually, I don't think I have addressable installed. Let's uh, let's check. I might not have uh, I might not have the package yet. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any installed. Let's install it quick. Cool. 
cool. Okay, so we have the package. Let's try this again. Yeah, so we have this, yeah, an asset reference. Let's call it also prefab ref. Yeah, sure. Actually, ah, come on. Let's do it the the correct way. Let's make it a private with serialized field, and let's look at what's uh, what's happening now right here. Cool. So, so they look, uh, they both look similar, and I can just drag the module in here, or I can't. Hmm. I can't. I have to make. Let's see. I have to make a reference. Is that a thing, or should I just? Uh, I may just have to to mark the the asset as addressable. That's gonna do a lot of stuff. Yeah, so that's the path for it. Okay, so it created me a lot of default um, default files. Okay, let's try it now. So let's go to the module, and now I should be able to drag this in here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So now we have. We have the asset here, but instead of having, as I said, instead of having a hard reference to it, um, the 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 asset reference is gonna just, yeah, store a reference to the or a, yeah, the GID or a path to it, and use that whenever we whenever you wanna load it into memory. So let's just. Yeah, let's uh, sign for all the data, uh, the, the the correct, um, wait, I was able to, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, you, because I have, I didn't have uh, addressables, uh, all the, the, the basic data for the addressables initialized. It uh, didn't allow me to, to drag and drop, but now that I have uh, all of that generated, I can just drag an, an asset in here and it's just gonna, yeah, it's automatically gonna mark it as addressable. So let's see. So this split, uh, split prefab is not addressable, but after I drag it in here, by magic, yeah, this, this one is ticked and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's in the system, let's say. Okay, so we've assigned all the all the prefabs, and now what I would like to do is see how I can get the data from this. So I how how can I load it? Let's get to the tower builder. Actually, uh, it's gonna be easier if I just see where this is used. Okay, so here we have this. Why are you complaining? Nah, that's fine. Okay, so we have the prefab, which is cool but not cool because actually I'm not sure if they I know I know they had them plan uh, so so they, they from the beginning they had a, a, an async way of uh, getting the the data the object or whatever you store in that uh, asset reference and I know they had in plan to add a synchronous way of doing it I'm not sure if it's in the latest version I hope it is because it's gonna help with this code but. Uh, so okay, let's make a a way of getting it. So this is private. This is gonna be public prefab reference. Yeah. Okay. Prefab ref dot. And now gets the fun part. I don't know how to get instantiate a sync. Oh, interesting. Load asset async, but I don't want to do it async, I want to do it synchronous. Uh, this is not a scene, uh, this is an, uh, it's an object. Load asset async is a game object. 
and do you need any properties you don't need anything but I think I can do something here and get it um, make it so that it's synchronous or maybe not okay so how do I do this synchronous or or, or we don't have this uh, we don't have this yet let's check I'm not sure um, yeah let's do this here so uh, synchronous workflow perfect let's see how this works adjustable load uh, asset async wait for completion but I haven't seen that that's uh, not something I saw yeah that, this is not something I saw here hmm It's not recommended to call wait for completion of operation is going to fetch and download the remote hash. Although it's possible if it's uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we have actually wait, what's this version? One seventeen? I think we we have one sixteen in here. So that's why we might not have the. Yeah, so if I, we have 116, can we upgrade to 117? We can, but it's not verified for this version of Unity, which kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. Hmm. Let's look at the change log a bit. Let's see. Let's see when they introduce the the synchronous. Yeah, so it's in one seventeen. And can we see which Unity versions they support? Because if they say that they they say that they support uh, uh, 2020 LTS, I'm just gonna go for it and just upgrade to to the latest. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's not verified, but but it's compatible. So I should be able to just go to the latest version and uh, just be done with it. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna do that, even though it's not verified. So let's get to to the latest. Let's upgrade. I mean, I could change the. I could change the code to to make it uh, be asynchronous. That wouldn't be a problem, but if I can do it synchronously, uh, I think that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be easier. And I don't think I'm gonna have a it's not gonna, it's not gonna impact the performance quite uh, that much. But yeah, we're gonna see. So now we should have a yeah wait for completion. That's it. So now the question is uh, wait for completion. What does it do? It's gonna return me the yes, yeah, so it's gonna return me the the object. So we're gonna have the prefab and it's gonna be a game object right yes or good game uh, yeah game object cool so now we can do this actually so we load yeah we load the reference we wait for it okay let's see how it works or if it works I hope it works why does it bother me what what uh, assembly for will not be compiled besides because it has no scripts, okay, whatever. I don't care about that module. Okay, let's see what this does. So we have the tower builder. Let's expand it by five. Boom. Attempting to load asset reference that has been loaded. Handle is exposed through getter. Mm, yeah, okay, so that's that's a problem. That is a problem. So we try to load the same os uh, the same asset. Hmm. I 
Actually, no, I'm th what I'm thinking is, I wonder if um, I wonder if it's uh, it was if it was already loaded or it was. Uh... Oh yeah, but uh, no, actually, that is it, it said that has already been loaded. Okay, so I tried to load something that was loaded already. Okay, so I, I could cache this value for runtime, and that's that should be fine. So whenever I load it. Um, and because I do it synchronously, it's not going to be an issue because it's going to hold the program. So what I could do is in the tor module. Okay, so we can actually we can get rid of this. Actually, not all of it. So we can get rid of that. We can actually we need we also need that. No. Yeah. So we can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. This is going to be public so I can write in it and uh, read from it and it's not gonna be serialized and let's, let's do it like this okay let's rename it to prefab with the capital P and let's just save it in there so instead of saving in a, in a local variable, we're gonna do module data dot prefab. So basically the same thing that we had before, except that we're gonna look at this before trying to load it. So if this is not null, we're just gonna return it. Otherwise we're gonna load it. And this should help with uh, the 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 error we we got previously. If we did this uh, asynchronously, we'd have another issue. But also, I think it would be easy to to fix that too. But we'd have an issue where uh, we would start loading uh, the asset twice. And that's, it's gonna do it uh, in parallel, I guess. But we don't have that issue because we do it synchronously. Okay, so let's try it. Let's do uh, just a huge tower, like 20 modules, to to check if it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So it happily did it. And the tower looks fine. So the the path look uh, look continuous. Cool. This is actually cool. So we did we did it. So let's look at the modules actually. Yeah. So we so we don't have the um, the prefab in here. I mean it's saved in here somewhere. Can we can we check? Yeah. So so Odin tells us that uh, Unity doesn't serialize the prefab, which is exactly what we want. The public view is key because yeah, we use non-serialized. Awesome. Cool. So so we so we so we solved this problem. I mean, it wasn't a problem right now, but it it would have become a a big problem in a in in the future. Okay. Um. Let's see what's happening here. Wait, what? Ah, okay. Any news here? Nothing, nothing new. Okay. Okay, so this, this went quicker than I anticipated. So I, I thought it's gonna take, I, I, I mean, I, I assigned an hour for this task. And only took 21 minutes. And this does pose a problem because those were all the tasks that I had planned. I mean, not planned, but that I thought about doing today. So let's save this. Actually, let's let's look one last time at. Um, yeah, I'll have to dig into the 
to all the files that the the addressable package generated because they're actually let's let's look what what uh, what it did so where is the addressable things it's in the asset management right yeah so let's look at groups so so our files should end up here yeah so we have a group I might just create another group that has all the modules. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll have to play a lot of th with this after we make the after we make the modules more complex. But for now, it's okay. I'll have to play with uh, with uh, more groups here. But this looks this looks fine. Cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, let's let's commit this. This this is fine. So we change the manifest because we added the package. We change the modules because we added yeah we added the the reference and the code. Yeah, this looks fine. Let's do a save just in case there's something that's not saved. Looks fine. Let's publish this. Okay, let me create a task for the issue that we that we encountered encountered previously with the uh, composite splines. Just so that I, that I keep track of it, even though I'm not gonna fix it probably. But I'm just gonna uh, just gonna put a, a bug for it. So composites plans are not combined after expanding the tower. Composites plans. Yeah, this looks fine. I'm gonna throw it in the backlog, and it's a bug. And it has to do with pass. Okay. Cool. Now, I wonder what 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 we should do. So I have the tower builder. I may just. Um, I think I'm gonna remove the dummy enemy. I mean, I'm gonna remove it from the tower builder because it doesn't make sense to be there. And just um... yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna remove it from the tower builder and make a separate, I don't know, spawner script that uh, that spawns them after the tower builder builds the tower. Okay, let's make uh, let's make some tasks for this, so that we uh, uh, keep uh, track of time. Okay, create dummy enemy spawner. Uh, this is programming. This is enemy. And I estimate about 30 minutes for this. But actually 30 minutes might not be... <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Okay, so I made the task. Let's start tracking the time. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see what this code looks like. So... Yeah, so... In the last part of the of the expand function, we get all the splines, we create the game objects for it, and we yeah, so we instantiate uh, an enemy for each composite spline. So this is the part that we wanna remove.
Okay. Where is the dummy? Oh, so here is the dummy enemy. Okay. Let's make a folder. Let's call it enemy. Should I call it enemy or enemies? I think I'm gonna call it enemies. Okay, so it's enemies, another folder, let's call it spawner. Okay, and let's call it dummy spawner. It's gonna be a mono behavior, and Yeah, so what what do we need so so first of all we need actually let's get this dummy enemy we'll need a reference to the dummy enemy and we will need a way of knowing the composite splines so we'll have to save the composite splines somewhere so we have access to them and we have to know, or not necessarily know, but someone has to call a function in the spawner that starts spawning the, the enemies after the, the tower builder has finished. Um, yeah. I mean, I could do this manually, and I think that's gonna what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do at the beginning. Okay, so so we'll need. Um, let's make a public void function. Let's call it spawn. So we'll have the f we'll have a, a function that just basically spawns an enemy. Let's just. Come on. Yeah. So let's copy this. And we will need the spline, which we don't have. Now the question is where do we get the spline from? Should we get it here? Should we get it from somewhere else? Or like maybe store it in the tower builder? After we complete the tower, just store the store all the all the composite splines there. I'm not sure. Hmm. Sure, how we should do it. I'm trying to think if I would need uh, the composite splines anywhere else, and also who's gonna, in the end, who's gonna call the spawner to spawn enemies. I mean, actually, the spawner is gonna call itself, uh, but yeah, who's gonna tell him to start spawning? More like. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna add it here. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna receive the the composite spline. Also, let's remove this and this. So we just we just got rid of 
the dummy enemy from the tower builder and we have a spawner now let's put a button on this uh, button from Odin yeah this looks fine let's create that dummy spawner dummy spawner and let's get the dummy enemy in here okay let's clean up the clean up the scene a bit okay so where's the tower builder let's put it at zero zero let's reset this also so it's gonna be there here's the spawner and we have the spawn function okay let's try this so we will have a, a tower of size 10 let's say okay and let's spawn some enemies where's my dummy spawner Spa spawner okay i have to change that okay so yeah so we have two splines let's try the first one that died the variable damage doesn't wait what wait what Oh, I think I I think I've assigned the I haven't assigned the the prefab, but the the one in the 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 object in the scene that I just deleted. Okay, let's try this again. And I haven't changed the name. I want to change the name because it's spawn. Sp and why did I make that a capital letter? Spawner, yeah. Okay, so tower, tower spawner, 10 modules, there we have it, damn, those are a lot of composite splines, let's just choose one, let's invoke, there we go, and now we can, we can create how many enemies we want. nice okay so we have a spawner that's separate from the tower builder cool But obviously, I don't want to. I don't want to spawn. Spawn them manually. So let's do something here. Let's. Um, hmm. rate let's say it's gonna be one per second actually let's do this afloat so this is a serialized field I'm gonna do a s suffix label so per yeah and it's per second make uh, um, no not your timer I want my timer where's my timer <gasps> I 
I don't have a timer. God damn it, it's not. Ah, oh, shit, I haven't put the timer in as a framework. God damn it. Fine. Okay, I'm gonna move it. Um, actually, I don't know. I just, I'm just not gonna do it. Um, or should I get it? Ah. Uh, Yeah, I want that class. It's just easier with it. Okay, so let's see where do we get it from. Where is where is Equinox Hunt here? Here it is. Yeah. Let's just get this and put it in here. I can't paste it. That's it. Okay. So I have to make it. I have to make the file myself. Timer. So this. Let's put a system there. Another system here. Another system here. And let's import Unity. And that should do it. Okay. So now we can make a timer. And I want my timer. Okay, so this is a new timer. I'm gonna do one over one F over spawn rate. What the fuck? One over spawn rate, and this is gonna be the function. Oh, come on! Uh, and I don't have a spline. I don't know for now. Let's just leave it like this and I have to do I have to update this. Time the delta time. Okay. Okay, but now now really. Um uh, where do I get the splines from? I don't know if, this, if the tower builder should keep track of the modules and whatever he built, or if he should if he should just. I mean, he knows the last module, so he might as well just keep track of all the all the tower. So I might just have. Composite spline. Um, actually, why why have I made those? Doesn't make any sense to have them serialized. Doesn't make any sense because I don't need them. I don't need them saved, but I want to see them just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same to the splines. Just wanna see them and I don't wanna change them. Okay, so we have the splines and in the expand function, we're just gonna save them. So those are the composite splines. Yeah, let's just put them directly in here. And that doesn't work because this must be an array. No, why doesn't this work? Uh, 
Oh, because it's a list. Oh, because I haven't made the splines yet. I'm stupid. Because that's what I'm doing here. Yeah. Okay, so we have the composite splines. We iterate over them. Yeah. Let's how we do this. We're gonna just do. Okay, so splines is gonna be this. Uh, no, no, this. We're gonna do a select. Gonna copy this. Um, and just return CS. Uh, not string to array. And now we can remove this. So we do all the all the stuff, but we also save it into splines. So now we can expose the splines. We can do this. Uh, it's not probably this is public. Public composite splines. So now in our spawner we'll need a reference to the tower builder, which is kind of shit. I will have to change this, this is not actually good. So it's private tower builder, it doesn't make any sense, it doesn't make any sense because of the name. Because what does the tower builder have to do with the spawner? It's not, yeah, it's not a good place to keep the data. There should be an external place where I where I would save the, the data. But for now it's okay just to test it, but, but I'll have to change it. Have to, I'll, I'll have to make something else. Because it doesn't make any sense right now. So, uh, tower builder, tower builder. So we have tower builder dot splines and let's get a random spline. Uh, no, not math, it's uh, random and not the one from system, it's one from unity, zero this dot length, and this is an int, so it's gonna be exclusive, yes, let's remove this, why do we have system here, why do we have system here, who's using system, no one, what the fuck, Ah, it was because of this. Okay, so now it should work. Let's make this a serialized field and let's assign it. Tower Builder. Um, yeah, let's remove this. This is gonna be private. Now, what I wanna do actually, yeah. Or actually, no, that's, that I can do it in a simpler way. So so I can just disable the script. Or no, not just it. Disable the, the spawner altogether. Save it like this. And enable it after I have a, I have the tower built. So let's say 10 modules. Have the tower. Let's get to this. And let's get, get him to spawn some enemies. There we go. So we have one enemy per second. And I can't change this because we have the runtime and you have the timer. But yeah, cool. Cool. So you have a working, a working spawner. Nice.
Okay. Why does it complain? Because I put a random shit here. Okay, so... Yeah, I can't leave it like this. So, we're gonna start... Building the actual... Infrastructure for the game. Yeah. Let's make a new scene. Let's make a... Actually... Nah, I'm gonna transform the playground. It's gonna be easier. So... Let's get some windows open. So, we need services. So that we can see them. We need... Actually, that's all I need for now. I don't have fence. I don't have objects yet. Actually, I might look at the objects. Let's get some objects in here. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay, let's let's stop this task with the dummy spawner because we have it. And let's let's just commit this. Or should I? Yeah, let's should, let's commit this. And let's create another task for. Yeah, I estimate this to be like, actually not one hour, 30 minutes should be enough to get the basic thing going. Yeah, 30 minutes. Okay, let's get back. Okay, so, what do we have to do? So, we... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's start by making a... Let's get this in here, the basic loader. And let's make, let's add whatever he needs. Okay, so, uh, actually let's go to settings, rendering, no, uh, settings. Um, I want a folder, I'm gonna call it UI. And actually I'm gonna put it in game. Let's create two variables and found objects count and the loaded objects count okay so found here loaded here let's make the concurrency higher though it's not going to matter right now because we only have we're going to have two things that we're going to load Okay, so we have a loader. Oh, also let's get the... Where's the life cycle thing here? Let's get the properties for this. Let's put it... Where should we put it? Actually, put, let's put it here. Oh, that's, that looks like shit. Hmm, I should fix this. Because I don't, I don't show the header, okay. I'll have to fix this somehow. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so we have uh, the lifecycle service, which is gonna be. Let's look at it. Yeah, so it's initialized because the loader did nothing, because it found nothing. So now what we're gonna do, let's make this tower builder part of the. Uh, I forgot to start the task. God damn it. Let's log like three minutes in here. Okay, let's go to the tower builder and let's make some changes to it. So, tower builder. 
instead of being a basic mono behavior let's make it a life cycle component let's load phase in the load phase we're just gonna um, yeah let's just expand it by let's see a size of 10 So basically, what what's that gonna do? So 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 what I did right now, um, I have a I have a package that I made for for our previous game, uh, the Equinox Hunt. That handles a lot of um, yeah general stuff for for yeah for any game like um, what I have is lifecycle for example. So so what life uh, this lifecycle service does is just. Uh, it's like a, a global state of what uh, what's the state of the game um, like uh, is it playing is it paused uh, is it loading or stuff like that and I have components that hook into this so um, they uh, they react uh, to uh, the game being played or if the if the game starts playing or yeah if the if the, if the, the, the state changes to playing uh, you can do stuff, or if it's uh, if it's paused, it's uh, the update functions of the of the cer uh, of that certain component just stop um, stop updating basically. So basically, just inst instead of just using uh, straight up mono behaviors, using some uh, some other components. Some yeah, uh, I get I get some. Uh, I get some uh, some functionality like okay so for example I have a th those functions that I can uh, that, that I can uh, oh, what do you call it override so on first play so the first time the the game plays I can do stuff or on play on pause on stop uh, on stop is like the the, the the final state where you just uh, think about it when you like lose the game for example you're not you're gonna still show the game maybe but you're gonna show uh, an overlay a menu on top of it so basically everything is stopped you can go back to playing the game um, so yeah that, that's like the final state so you can get out of it it's not like uh, it's not like you're in the pause menu and you, you can close it you're just like in the, the final step of the, of, the, of the game so yeah I can I can just override those methods in uh, in my uh, direct class and uh, I just get this functionality for free just by uh, just by yeah extending this uh, this class so yeah just by doing this and ah and there's also an, uh, another another uh, function uh, or another method that I that, that I must uh, that I must overwrite which is called load phase so the lifecycle component uh, also extends another class that does something else. It's called a loadable. So what this class does is um, basically um, you have something like uh, what, um, you have an, a game object that you want to do something when the game starts. So when the when the when the scene loads, basically. And um, yeah, <laughs> random to do. Um, yeah, so basically you just implement uh, that function, uh, you do whatever you want to do in that function, and um, uh, the game doesn't doesn't start until every every class that extends loadable is actually loaded. So yeah, you you know exactly when you can play the game, and when you play it, you 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 know for sure that everything has been loaded. So. Let's let's get back here. So now, if you look at the tower builder, we have some some new fields in here that weren't previously. So we have the the loaded. Uh, so we have a, a field for loaded. So we know we know if the if the this this uh, script has been loaded. We know if it's playing. So playing basically says that uh, it just reiterates 
if the if the like uh, the, if the state in the lifecycle service is uh, is on playing. So it shows you that yeah, I'm updating or I'm doing whatever I can do um, while the game is playing. It shows if it play, it, it has played once, and this field here it just tells you how long uh, did the load process uh, or the load method uh, took uh, for this specific uh, for this specific script. It's more for debugging purposes. Okay, so now. Uh, and also, we, I have a I have another script that uh, is this uh, is this loader that uh, whenever the scene loads, it tries to find all the all the loadables um, in the scene and just starts loading them. And whenever the the loading uh, start uh, stops or uh, like uh, I have loaded everything, it just uh, uh, says to the lifecycle service that okay I I've initialized everything so change the change the stage to initialize so basically everything is loaded and then some other system is gonna say okay uh, it's gonna change the state into actually playing the game and that's that part I'm gonna do it manually for now so okay so so basically after everything I said what is gonna translate into is when I press play I should get the tower built without me actually uh, interacting with the with the script or building or expanding it so I should have um, I should have a tower uh, with 10 modules and uh, yep there we go so we have I have the tower so I have the tower it, it has been built if you look at the script um, it says that it was not loaded. What the heck? <laughs> it gives me the time, but it says that it was not loaded. What? It's not playing because it's in the initialized state, but I can press play. And yeah, it played once and it's playing right now. But I don't know why, it's, why it says that it's not loaded. That's, that's weird. That's a bug because it is loaded. If if it didn't stop uh, or if it didn't finish loading, it uh, wouldn't have gotten the initialized uh, initialized step. So that's weird. And also 10 seconds. That's not right. That wasn't 10 seconds, or was it? Okay, this is weird. So uh, let's look at the the variables that I just did. Yeah, so it found the one object and it loaded it loaded none. What? That doesn't make any sense. Why did why didn't it load anything? Because it's wait what? Why didn't it load the the tower builder? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's time to do some debugging because I don't know why it doesn't work. I might I might just miss something. I might just have to add something else, but I, I'm I'm not sure I have to, actually. But I don't, I don't know why it doesn't why it doesn't do anything. Okay, let's put a breakpoint here and let's see what it does. Because I'm pretty sure it should work. And let's get into debug mode oh loadable tower builder has taken it to load to okay so I consider it that's why that's why it didn't it didn't load because I say that it, it took too long to load hmm interesting I thought it was like almost instant, but apparently it says that it, it has taken too long. Why? This is weird. So that, yeah, so that's why I saw the 10 seconds, because that's the timeout. Hmm. So, okay, so I did the load. 
I do I do my things here and on top of it I start a coroutine. Yeah. Start a coroutine. Hmm, this is weird. Why doesn't it work? I mean, it should work. I have it working in another project. I might just have to take a look at that. I'm, I'm probably missing something, but I don't know what. Oh, uh, I know exactly why. I know exactly why. I forgot how I did my... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly why. So, I have to call some function. So, so I have the load phase, and I'm pretty sure I have to call. Um, I have to call a method. Um, I might, I might just have to 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 call the complete load. I just, I, I have to call it myself. So previously, uh, what I did for the Equinox hunt, I had uh, this uh, load phase was uh, was an asynchronous function, so it was like this. And I returned a, a task, so basically, whoever uh, called this function would have to uh, was uh, yeah yeah had to had to keep track of all the tasks that I returned from the load phases and uh, wait for for each uh, each one of them to to return to yeah to to finish actually. But that was uh, in the end it was a bad uh, bad idea because uh, yeah I had some issues with async. In the in the end, so I decided to to make it uh, a little bit simpler. So instead of having this uh, await thing, I have a function that I that I have to call after. So I have to call it in the load phase after I've done everything. But uh, yeah, yeah. So theoretically, after I do this, I should be fine. So now let's look at the tower builder and I should get the tick here for loaded. Yep, I have it. If we look at loaded objects, yep, we have one loaded object, one found and one loaded. And now if we set it to playing, yeah, we, we get the tick in the, in those boxes. So now, so basically right now we, we have the tower being generated automatically whenever we start the scene. And what I would like to do next is hook the dummy spawner to the to the playing to the playing state. And so whenever the, the game plays or while the game plays, uh, the dummy the dummy spawner should uh, spawn uh, enemies. And whenever it gets to it gets stopped or, or paused, uh, it should stop. So let's do that. Um, yeah, actually I, yeah, never mind. Um, I sh yeah, no, I, sh I should get that, uh, basic loader. Let's get this out of here because it's, it's not needed anymore. Okay. So let's get back to our thing so the dummy spawner instead of being a mono behavior it will be also a life cycle component let's implement everything and instead of doing things in awake actually no it's fine to do those things in awake I'm not gonna do anything in the load phase except for for completing immediately because I don't have anything to load but what I want to do though is on play I want to do some things and on pause I want to do something else. So let's 
do it like this. Okay, and in the update, I'm gonna just do if not can update, I'm just gonna return. Otherwise, I'm gonna update the timer as, well as, as before. Okay, that should be it. And we have to enable this so that it, it gets found by the by the loader. So yeah, so we get the the same fields here too. And let's make this a bit more uh, dramatic so we can see better. Let's see, five units per second. So now we can start the scene. We get the tower, and now if I uh, if I change the state of playing, I start getting enemies. If I say it stopped, it also stops. the The enemies doesn't react to this state because I haven't hooked them to it. But it should be the same. So whenever I, whenever it's in the pause state, the enemies should uh, should uh, freeze into place. So I might just do that. So so it does make sense having this state. Let's let's do it real quick. So we have a dummy enemy. Which um, actually let's let's move the dummy enemy in the folder here. Even though I'm gonna get rid of it um, quite soon, I guess. Let's change the namespace and let's also make it a lifecycle component. Uh, I'm gonna do nothing in the load phase. Actually, this might not work. This might not actually work because the dummy enemies are are not. Um, yeah. So the dummy the, the dummy enemies are not spawned at the beginning, so the loader won't know about them so they won't be loaded but actually I don't want it to be I don't need or I don't need it to be a lifecycle component I can just hook into the lifecycle component myself so uh, no, the lifecycle service I mean so let's do actually I think I, I, sh I have to do it and start so lifecycle service dot instance dot lifecycle state dot add listener so I'm gonna listen for playing and I'm gonna do something here um, I don't need this parameter and I'm gonna listen for the I could use yeah I'm gonna do paused for the post state and I'm gonna do the same as in the spawner I'm gonna have this variable let's put it here so when I'm um, when the game is playing I'm gonna set it to true when it's not playing I'm gonna set it to false and in the update I'm gonna just check it and return if it's false let's remove this system from here cool so now the enemies should also be hooked into the into the life cycle. Let's play this. Okay. And it didn't work. Why is that? I mean, the, the enemies are spawned, but they're not moving. Hmm. Where? Why aren't they moving? Let's pause this because they're they're it's spawning like crazy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's right. So so the problem is that um, when I spawn the enemies, the 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 state is already playing. So I, I'm not. So so the add listener uh, uh, is just saying okay whenever I I enter. Enter the state that I pro that uh, that is provided. I'm gonna call the function, but if I'm already on that state, I'm not gonna call it. So I have to do this check myself. 
um, basically I have to so so the, the the life cycle component already deals with this but it would be a bit it it's uh, it's better to do it this way so so I'm gonna update manually the can update in, in, in start so I'm gonna say life cycle service dot instant dot I have a I have god damn it I have a nice function so if it's playing I want to update so I'm gonna do this and now if you try it again if uh, after I press play uh, or I put the life cycle in the uh, in the playing state the enemies should move also there we go we get the enemy spawning and when I stop yeah the spawning stops too and the enemies as well and if I get back to playing they continue nice cool Cool. This is nice. This is actually nice. What I would have to do right now is make a script that press basically press press plays for me because I don't want to press the button every time so I'm gonna just make I'm gonna make a small script so hmm let's call it game manager Game manager is gonna be a mono behavior, and this should be like this. And whenever, so in start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the service, we're gonna add a listener for the initialized state, and whenever we get here. We're gonna set the state to playing. Uh, I said playing. So this is gonna automatically do this for me. Whenever the game is loaded, it's gonna immediately, immediately change it to playing. So I don't have to press that button again. So let's let's make that game manager. There we go. So if I press play, I should get. already playing and already getting enemies cool and I can pause it if I want to I can go back to playing this is nice this is actually nice hmm. cool cool Uh, let's um, stop the stop the task. Oh, this is nice. Good estimation. I did this in 20 minutes, and I I estimated 30. That's nice. Okay, what we'll changed here? So we have some folders. We have the game manager. I changed something in the tower builder. I changed something in the tower builder. Wait, what? Sorry. What's what's this? I don't remember. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because I added the the load field. Yeah, correctly. 
Yeah, this looks fine. Let's commit this. Yeah. Okay. Now we have the we have the problem again. I don't know what to do next. It's a bit hard to 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 think how how I mean what you should do on a game when when it's at the very beginning. I mean, like thinking in what order you should do things. Because I know I know what I have to do, but I don't know in what order and what I should work on next. Without, yeah, without having the foundation, like what we, what I do right now, it's hard to, to say exactly what I should work on. But yeah, having having some elements done, like the tower builder, and right now the everything being hooked into the life cycle, it should be easier to to start adding bits and pieces everywhere, and just uh, build on top of it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take another short break, just, yeah, one, two minutes, and I'm gonna be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, I still have no idea what to what to do next. I mean, code-wise, but um, I think I'm gonna do for now some more uh, some more modules. 
so that I have more variety for my for my for my tower. Um, and I'm just gonna think about what I should do. I should what I should do next. So I wanna do another piece for. Parallel. That's how you spell parallel. Yeah. Okay, so where was it? So we have this. Let's make a project tower. I want a tower module data. Let's assign it. Okay. So I want to do a piece that uh, that will stay between the, the split and the combine. So the split looks like this. It just splits into two, and the combine does the opposite. It takes two two inputs and exits through through one port. So I'll do um, a module that is basically like the straight piece, but it has two lanes. So we have, we're going to have two paths, one at from 90 to 90 and another one, which is going to be at 270, 270. And let's uh, define correctly the in and out ports. So we're gonna have two in ports, one at 90 and one at uh, 270, and also two out ports at the same values, 270, 270. Uh, okay. So we have a straight piece. And I'm gonna do another one that's similar to this. Let's call it helix. Okay, and uh, so the, the only difference gun is gonna be that this goes to 270, and this goes to 90. <sighs> Interesting. No, this is not gonna be gonna go to 90. Can I put minus 90? That's not what I want though. Uh, yeah, I want uh, 360 plus 90, what's that? Uh, 450? Yeah. Cool. And let's assign them to the modules manager so, th so the game knows about them. So we have Helix and parallel yeah let's try to make another tower to see how those new pieces look like and it of course is gonna break what tower builders four modules oh yeah yeah that does make sense I forgot to assign the the the, the modules in the in the data file okay and all those are addressables. All good. Let's play again. Hell yeah. But we don't have any. We don't have any of those uh, cool pieces. What is going on here? What the, what the heck happened? This is not me. Okay. Yeah, it just broke for no reason. Okay, that was weird. Let's try to make the, the let's try to expand the tower a bit. Or actually let's just yeah no, yeah, let's just expand it by another ten modules and see if we can get the 
there we go. We have the straight uh, or the parallel lines. Nice. Let's try another 10. Let's see if we can get the helix. Yes, we, we did get it. Nice. Okay, so we have two new two new modules. Cool. Let's uh, tone down this. Let's make it one per second because it's getting insane pretty fast. Okay. And I still have no idea what to do next. Uh, let's. Um, Out. Let's look at the uh, GDD of the game. Let's uh, read through it and see what what stands out. Let's look at the tower. So, so we have the tower. We have we have paths because we have the the splines. We have segments and modules. So we do have this. We haven't started with the weapons yet, so that could be an area we could work on. We could look at enemies, and but. Yeah, I don't know if uh, actually I don't know if we should start at enemies because no we should we should before doing enemies we should do like health for the tower and we should do weapons probably and I don't know if I wanna start making the weapons right now it's gonna be yeah that's gonna be a big topic might do it later. Yeah, I think I know what I can do. I could um, I could um, change back a bit, uh, ch uh, change the what I did with the tower builder, and remove the data from it because it's not doesn't make any sense to have uh, to keep the data about the splines in here. So I might just do a hmm. How should I do this? How should I do this? So actually what what I have to think about is uh, we'll have to to save So we have a, a, a save and load system in the game. We we plan for this. So we will have to, yeah, I, th I think that's what, what I'm going to work on, a save and load system. I mean, I have the save and load system, I just have to make the, the, the components that actually use it. And save the, the tower structure and just, uh, yeah, be able to load it back. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, let's make that. Let's make a tower component. 
which is gonna be a uh, which is gonna be a um, what is that um, an entity component and I need a tower data class as well yeah tower data um, tower data is still, uh, already exists ah shit because we have that uh, yeah I'll have to change the name of this I mean it is tower data but it's more like global data or general data about uh, the tower not uh, not about the instance of the tower yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have to change the, the name of the class so yeah global tower data yeah that should do it um, So let's see if this compiles and see if it still works. And if we still have, if we still have data on the. So where was it? In here, tower data. Yep, we still have the data, and let's also rename this. So this is global tower data. Yeah. Let's try to play it again. We have enemies, we have pets, we have the tower. So yeah, works, works great. And now we can create our our actual tower data class. So tower data is gonna extend, uh, it's gonna extend entity data. And I th think this is the one that I want to extend. How was this? So I have to specify a struct, right? Yeah, the serialized data. Yeah, I have to make a struct. Actually, yeah. And let's pass this. So it's tower data dot this and it wants me to implement some missing members which I will do but not here okay let's let's uh, group this a bit because I don't like it so I want to Make a folder, let's call it entity, and move the tower and the tower data in there. Tower enti entity. Let's get into tower 2, change this. Also, this is, uh, I'm gonna pass in the tower, tower data component. And I'm gonna explain a bit why what uh, what all those classes do let's close whatever we don't need right now okay and i want to do a another class to separate things a bit so this is uh it's gonna be like this it's not gonna be called this and this is gonna be a partial class and i sh yeah it made this partial too so now those members that I have to implement, I'm going to implement them here. So we have uh, save from serialized data. So basically I don't have to do anything because I'm not saving anything right now. But this, this, yeah, this is something I have to do. So I'm going to return a new serialized tower data with 
nothing in it because it's empty right now. But that's what I'll have to do. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, um, let's change the music. Let's see what what should we listen to. Um, I would like to listen to that, but then I don't think that's okay for the stream. Yeah, let's continue with the same musician. Let's uh, let's do some Star Set because Star Set is always nice. Okay. Okay, let's construct this this entity, and um, yeah, I'll have to do some. Yeah. So this is gonna be the tower. It's gonna be the tower. It's gonna have an entity root. It needs a children lock. And we need to add this tower data class, which is empty right now, but we're gonna populate it with stuff. Let's create an empty in here. Let's add a tower. Yeah, yeah, just leave it as tower. Let's assign everything. So we have the root and the data. We have to add a I think I'm gonna need this. I'm not sure if I will need it. But let's just add it for the time being. Okay. And I'm gonna need an importer for sure. Okay, so this is a tower. I'll have to change the tower builder as well and move it into here. But um, yeah, for now it's okay. Okay, so let's see what we've done. Let's play the game and see if it if it works as expected. So we have the tower. It loaded. It, it loaded. It. It's playing uh, as expected. Everything is locked inside. Wow, what a weird tower! It has street pieces for like half of it. Hmm. Maybe I should do something about that so that we don't have like multiple modules of the same type. Um, one after the other. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I mean, this might not happen if, if you have uh, like a lot of modules. So it might might not be necessary to, to write code for that. But going back to this. So it looks like we've done everything good. So let's look at the console. We will need the GUID for sure. That's not needed. But it looks like it's being saved. Uh, it's being saved correctly. Okay, so so let me explain what I've done and what the, all the classes that I used are are doing. Okay, so on top of the on top of the the lifecycle service that I have, that uh, yeah, what we used previously for the for the tower builder. I've uh, I've made some some more uh, some some more classes that um, basically what they do they sit on top of of the of this of this uh, lifecycle uh, service 
and um, let's see let's uh, let's take the tower for example oh, I mean the tower the the class I used for the tower so so we have what's called an entity component and what an entity component is um, it's just a simple mono behavior but uh, it has saved uh, it has the the data saved separately so so it has a reference to the to the data class so what I what I wanted to do uh, in here is separate the data that I that I that I need for for a component separated from the actual logic. Um, this is more in line with uh, what Unity is trying to do with uh, with ECS. But what I did is uh, just uh, it's uh, way less performant than what uh, what they've done. In here in, in my code is just more like an idea that I that I want to I want to keep the things separate, but uh, it doesn't help in any way. I mean it helps a little bit, but uh, uh, for another reason. So yeah, uh, the entity component is just uh, a simple mono behavior with uh, with a reference to the data class, and uh, the data class is. So, for example, for the tower data is so is, is this entity data class, which does a couple of things. So, first of all, it has a reference to to what I call the what I call serial serialized data. So, what I what I wanted to do is have uh, have some basic classes that I can implement and get uh, a save and load system for free just by writing the uh, writing code uh, a certain way so basically that's that's what this is i have so i, I create this tower data data class and an extended and extend the entity data and just uh, and this is going to be the class that i'm going to use in the editor so this is the the class right here and i have a uh, uh, a struct that basically uh, uh, holds the um, holds the the data in a serialized form, let's say. So instead of I don't know, let's say you have a reference to a game object, instead of uh, I'm, I I can't save that on the disk. I, I don't know how to save a reference uh, or. I don't know directly how to save a reference, but I can do. I can have some code that transforms that that reference that you have uh, at runtime into something that you can understand later when you want to deserialize the data. So, yeah, let's say I can. I, I have here. Let's let's make some dummy data. So let's say I have a public float. Uh, I don't know speed. Yeah, sure. Why not? Doesn't make sense for the tower, but. Uh, we're just gonna roll with it. So, so we have a public, uh, a public. Uh, so, so we wanna date. Uh, we wanna have this data for the tower. We have speed. Let's let's put something. Let's put height because it makes much more sense. So we have, we have the height of the tower, for example. So we have the height. This is all in dandy. We can use it wherever. If I go to the to the tower, um, to the tower component, let's I don't know. Go to awake. Now I can access that data, so I can say D from data, and I have the height that I specified, uh, that I declared in the other class. So now I can use it. And um, yeah, so this is fine. But what I want to, uh, what I want to do is uh, be able to to save this data to disk or whatever, save it somewhere and uh, import it later on. So what I have to do is also specify in this, specify it in this struct. So I would have to do something like this. So, when I want to save this component, what what uh, basically I, I just declare what uh, what data I want to save for this component. And uh, also I have to to tell the system how how it should transform from this uh, runtime uh, runtime component to to the serialized one. So that's uh, that's what those uh, two components are doing. So basically, I create a new a new struct and I assign the value, and I have to do the same here, uh, the same thing here. This is so this is for serializing data, and this is for 
de basically deserializing or more like the deserialization part has been done and I just have to extract the data and save it in the class. So I have the height and it's going to be, I'm just going to take it from the serialized data and just, just assign it. Uh, let's just actually, yeah, let's just do a, a log here and see, just to see the data, d dot high dot do string. Come on, import it. I'm not sure what this is. No idea what culture is. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, I guess this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand, but I don't. I, I don't care about that. It's probably in different languages. Uh, you, you you can have uh, numbers like this. So we have like twelve, and this is like. Uh, well, let's put a half. So this is half. But in other languages, you use a dot instead of a instead of a comma. So that's I guess that's what uh, what it's trying to tell me. If I if I care about the if I care about the the the, the character it's gonna use for for div for division there. Okay. Yeah. So now, if you go back to the to the game. And we actually play. Oh yeah. So on the tower right now, we're gonna see the the height that I declared. So so here's the height that I declared in the class. And I have a, a special a special component that uh, does the the loading and uh, saving of the on the data in a serialized form. So is this uh, entity important component? And I can just debug it. I can right click on it and uh, say export to console. And if I look at the code or whatever, uh, what he provided me, there are some things that, um, some, some information about the, the entity that I just saved, because it, it doesn't just save the data for this component, for the tower component, it saves the data for this whole entity defined by the, by the entity root. So it saves some data about the, the entity, the position, the rotation, and then the, the, the data, the, the actual data of the entity. And uh, in this case, so we have the, we have this tower data, the serialized tower data. And uh, yeah, it just, as you can see here is the height, is the, the, the actual value that was saved in the, in the component. So we have a five in here. That's what it said here. Okay, so yeah, so basically those components that I that I have here uh, do exactly this. They uh, they by writing code a certain way, you you get this uh, uh, save and load uh, functionality. So so the the, the same component, the, the entity importer, uh, if you would uh, call this from from code, I have uh, I have an option to 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 import such data and uh, it's gonna basically assign all the values uh, all the values correctly for each uh, for each component and uh, yeah so yeah basically that's uh, by, by writing the code in a certain way uh, I get this uh, uh, load and save system for free I mean yeah kind of for free and uh, the other part of the entity is this update manager, which this one hooks into the hooks into the lifecycle service, and you can uh, yeah you can instead of always updating, so uh, by uh, instead of always having an, an uh, a component that updates uh, every frame. So by doing an update here, if you want to do updates only when you, when the, when the game is playing, uh, just by, uh, just by adding some, 
adding adding this uh, this uh, what do you call it um, this interface and declaring something in here let's say so I just added the log in here so if I recompile this My, uh, if uh, I'm gonna look at the at the uh, update manager, when I'm gonna play on the listeners for the on update, I'm gonna get yeah, I'm gonna get one item which is the the tower component, and as you can see, I get updates because the game is playing. If I stop the game, I just say it's paused. The the update will, will stop as well until I start playing again and damn that was a <laughs> that was a lucky lucky click um, yeah so yeah as I said the I have some components that I that I built uh, on top of this system that uh, helps me with this so so I don't have to to implement those uh, the, this functionality each and every time for for every game that we make. Yeah, and yeah, if I play, start playing again, the update continues. Okay, now to the I guess the fun part. So. Everything I done, I have done right now is just so I can. Uh, wait, yeah, I have to remove this. I update because I don't need it. Um, everything I have done right now is just so I can move the tower builder inside this this entity and save the data in this new in this new component. So let's remove this height because because that's not something that I need. And let's remove it from here as well. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to to our tower builder, which is somewhere. Yeah, it's here. And instead of it being a lifecycle component, I'm gonna transform it into an entity component, which doesn't mean much. Just means that it has a reference to to the root, but we are not gonna uh, we're not going to use it in that way. But yeah, it has to be an entity component. And now uh, let's get our tower builder. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I have a I have another class in here. Uh, what's Oh, so so the entity component doesn't have a hmm, interesting. Wait, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why I did that. So I can no longer wait a second. This is okay. I think I might just I might have just made a mistake. This should be a loadable. Doesn't make any sense not to not for it to be to be a loadable. Doesn't make sense to be a lifecycle component because I don't care about that. I mean, not in every component, but it mm, it should be a loadable. Yeah, this should be a loadable. And I'll have to declare some functions in here, but that's not a problem. So let's call the complete load function immediately. And we have to fix something in the... Oh, so the importer. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is not gonna be. Let's just copy this. Cause I don't want to. I don't want to do this on a wake. I want to do it on the uh, in the load phase. I guess. Uh, and it is protected. Yeah, and just remove this one. And let's not forget to call the complete load method. Okay. So this just should still work. Yeah, and now, now our tower builder. Uh, yeah, works perfectly. So now uh, let's unlock the children. So I can drag this in here. Yeah, so we have a tower builder, which is an entity component. We have a lot of data for it, which is. Yeah, this is that data, data that I won't serialize. Mm. Yeah, this is fine. I should remove those those functions because I don't need them, them anymore. Let's make it shut up by assigning the root. Okay. Now I should be able to start this. Yep, works as before. Which is cool. Let me check something. So there were six things that, that were loaded. Hmm. Wonder what those were. So is the entity root for one? is the tower builder, 2, is this 3, 4 importer, 5 the update manager, there's another, ah, oh, the spawner, yeah, yeah, those are the 6 things that, that, uh, that have been loaded. Okay, now, let's go back uh, to the, uh, where's the tower, oh, Jesus, the tower is like way out there, let's uh, reset the position of it, to to the origin. Let's reset this as well to the origin. Let's make sure there's nothing that's like way out there. Cool. So everything is here. Now we have to look at the tower builder and see what data we have to save. For for us to, to be able to save uh, to save the tower and recreate it afterwards basically Okay, let's let's look at this. So we have the tower builder. We'll have to 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 save um, references to all the to all the modules that were used in creating the the tower. So the first thing in the tower data that we're gonna save is a uh, uh, kind of public. Tower data, the tower module data. It's gonna be. Let's make it a list because it's easier to work with. And let's call it modules. Let's not worry about the serialization for now. I'm gonna do that later. Okay, so we have so we have the modules. Um, and what do we have to do? In the tower builder, we will need a reference to the tower data. No, not public. Let's make it a private. Um, 
tower data, tower data. No. Okay. And every time I spawn a module. Add it, not range, just add current module. And after I get a new one, also I'm gonna add it to the modules. Cool. I'm, I won't need the, the last module, and also I won't need the tower size because I'm gonna get them from from this. So let's just let's just get rid of this. Um, where are those two saved? So those ones. So that's gonna go. Last modules it doesn't doesn't mean anything. So let's get this. So instead of searching for the last module, we're gonna look at the the modules list and get the length or the count, whatever. Yeah, count because it's a list. And uh, if it's greater than zero, let's get the last one. Otherwise, get a random one. Let's make uh, this a bit more prettier. Like this. Okay. The tower size is gonna be the count of this, which I'm gonna save. Tower size. And let's see where. So yeah, so those two doesn't don't exist anymore. But I have this and this. I'm gonna reset to a new list, I guess. Though this function, I'm not gonna I'm just I'm not gonna use it in, in the game. So, but yeah, just just to just to keep it uh, keep it working for now. Yeah, so we no longer have those two, but uh, we save the data in the. We save the modules in the tower data, so let's see how that works. So if you go back here, yeah, right now in the tower data we have this modules list. And if you play the game, we should get that list populated. Except that I first have to assign the, the tower data. Now it's going to work. Yep. So now if you look at the tower, at the tower data, we have the list of modules that, that have been used to create this tower. Nice. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have those those two saved. We'll also save the splines. Cause yeah, okay. So let's copy this. Public. Composite spline. Import this. And let's make this um, let's make this look better or prepare it to look better. So let's group some things. Let's make a top group. So base group tabs. Not in engine. No, I don't want it in engine. I want uh, I want another one, and it's gonna be um. Let's call it internal. Let's 
put both in this uh, in this tab. Okay, so we have both of them. Now let's save the splines into into this and remove this one and save it into that. Let's get rid of this as well. And this is not splines. It's gonna be tower data dot splines. Gonna save the array and yeah, that's it for here. And now we have to change the dummy spawner. Which is gonna need a reference to instead of the tower builder, it's gonna have a, a reference to the tower data, which still doesn't sound good. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. So, so instead of tower builder, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have tower data. We're gonna have the splines just as before and all we have to do is assign so this is dummy spawner let's assign this okay let's get rid of this actually let's get rid of all of them because There are more of those. Okay, so this one, this one as well. Let's get rid of more of useless imports. Okay, anything here? Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what we've done. So, so yeah, we assign this. We have those two here. Let's let's try to play it again and see if it still works. Yep, we still have enemies. They are spawning and they are going on the on the on the splines. If you look at the tower, we have the data. So we have four splines for this tower. We have the modules. So we have everything we need. Cool. One last thing I'll, uh, I'll have to do, um, just because this data, is, it, sh it shouldn't be, I mean, I want to store it, but I don't want to be able to change it manually from the inspector, so I'm going to just throw a read-only attribute on both of those. Yeah, so now I can't... Uh, I can't interact with it, but uh, if I play it again, I can still expand the list and look through it, but I can't uh, change any values. I can I can click on it, but yeah, so I can I can no longer add things or change things in here, which is perfect. Cool, cool. Cool, so now we have the data in another place, so it's no longer in the tower builder, it's in uh, in this tower component. All we have left to do is um, serial serialize those uh, tower modules data, those modules, so that we can save the game and load it uh, afterwards. So let's let's see how we can do that. Okay. No, so so no. Let's go back here. So obviously, I can't save the the references to this. I'm gonna have to do something different. So what I'm thinking of doing is instead of keeping uh, or storing uh, references to the modules, I'm gonna save. Um, actually I can make this an array so it's easier for it 
Okay, so I'm gonna save. Um, I'm gonna save an, an array of ints, and each of these ints is gonna be an index um, for for the module. Um, so, so we have this modules manager, which contains the list of all the available modules. So basically, what I'm gonna save is uh, we're gonna save the index from this list for for each of the modules. And uh, yeah. When I deserialize the data, I just look in this in this uh, in this list and get the the correct uh, the correct module and populate back the, the data. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get into this function. So now we have these modules and we have to somehow populate it. So it's gonna be simple. So we have to, uh, we have the modules which are the actual tower modules data and we're gonna go through all of them and we're gonna need yeah we're gonna need um, a reference to this modules manager so let's just let's just add this actually now that I think about it those no no that that's correct yeah no that's good so the modules manager Let's put it in the same group as the other ones. This is not going to be redone though, because I want to assign it from the editor. And now I can do this, and I can get actually not yet. Uh, get index. Get index for module. Module. It's going to be something like this without that. Maybe. Oh. Uh, comma let's create this method uh, t result is actually an int and I'm gonna return um, how was that I think it was in array so index of um, what's the array the array is tower modules and I want to find actually is it a function or is it the item directly is the value so I want to find the module it's just going to return me the the index for that module and let's make this one liner good and let's make the reverse as well if we're, if we're here get module for index it's going to be like this if we int index and this is as simple as doing this so that's the reverse okay so we save the modules and then here index goes to modules manager dot get get module for index index and he doesn't like it because what because this should be a list not an array cool so now what we've done is basically serialize the data so let's see. Let's play this. So we have this tower, and if we go to our entity importer and we export it to console, it's just gonna die because I haven't assigned the modules manager here. Let's try it again. Okay, entity importer. Let's clear the console and let's export the console. There we go. So now we have the modules and we have some indexes that I assume are correct. We're going to check later. But uh, just by looking at it, so the first three modules are the same. And that's what I see in the tower as well. So it's this uh, straight piece. So it looks like uh, it, it looks like it's doing the trick. Now what we have to do is make 
some script that does this um, automatically, like uh, saves the saves the tower data and then loads it uh, loads it back in. Um, let's see how we can do that. Let's make a, let's make it in the, in the in the game game manager. Yeah. So let's do private void save. Um. Yeah. And let's just do it. Super simple. So. Get all the root objects, select many as well. Get components in children, and I want every entity importer. Actually. Actually, I'm stupid. I think I have I have a, a component that does this already. Let me check. I think I have this already. Um, let's make a simple. So it's something like uh, let's go uh, let's go uh, basic basic basic. I think I may have this. Um, Uh, let's let's check. I think I think I have a component that does this. It's it's very basic, but I think I think I made something like this. Just just so that I don't have to make it uh, each and every time. So it would be in gameplay, I guess. In entities, save basic entity world save. There we go. We have something. Have a save and a load. There we go. Okay, I forgot about this. And we actually need something real quick here. Let's make all of those. Let's put buttons on all of those. Nope. I said buttons. So we can call them from. Actually, load. I don't need to. I don't need to to load. But uh, I would need save and clear. But yeah, let's see. Let's see this component that I forgot about. But I searched for basic and I didn't find it. Oh, it's a static class. My bad. Okay, so it's uh, it's just a dummy. I mean, it's not dummy, but um, it just has the the, the, the those uh, yeah. So the buttons doesn't the, the buttons don't help. Yeah, exactly what I wanted to do. Get all the root objects. Get all the importers. Yeah, yeah, I, I already have all this uh, all this implemented. So if I get back here, all I have to do is call not the basic loader but the basic entity world save dot save and that should be it. Let's put a button on that. The thing is that this won't actually work. Uh, I mean, not from the not at the beginning, because even though we load the data back from from wherever we save it, um, we won't. Um, what's my component? Oh, I haven't. Oh, actually no, it's a it's a game manager. So we have this save, and it did something, I guess. Um, and we don't have a player prefs thingy to look to check if we have the data. Let me try something. So we might be able to see this if we look in the In the registry, 
But actually, uh, hmm, let me think about it. It might actually be simpler if I just uh, just do a console log after after the save. Okay, so let's do a log in here. I don't know what's the message. Um, get string, and I don't know the key, but I'm gonna find it. So this is the key. Let's make this public. Save key. Okay. So now if you try this again, we should get a nice message in the console with the saved uh, the saved data. Trying to reset GID of tower. Okay, okay, okay. We st stuff is happening now. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! I almost dropped something. Yeah, so this is actually this is actually fine uh, because my entity is not actually set up correctly. I have to I have to do some changes on it. So those uh, those resetting things, yeah, they they are actually uh, they they are actually right. So because I would have multiple entities in a scene. Um, to be able to to save the data and input it back uh, where it came from, I have those. Uh, I have some IDs for each uh, for each entity. So, for example, I have uh, this GUID which refers to, uh, to to an entity, and I right now is empty, so I should um, create it. So I have something. I have yeah. This is a GUID, and I have it saved. And uh, this will be saved in, in with the in with the data. And when I load the data, I know uh, where to put it, basically. And I also have another GUID, which is called uh, which is called the uh, type GUID, uh, which is basically in case you have multiple entities of the same type. Uh, yeah, basically this uh, this type GUID will be shared between them. And it's useful when you when you try to spawn entities at runtime, because maybe uh, you you wanna so so it's gonna be an entity that is not gonna be saved in the scene. So whenever you you play the game, you would have to spawn that uh, that entity back into the scene with the with the data you have in the save file, and that uh, type GID helps you um, have a reference, basically have a bridge between. This ID and uh, and the pre the the prefab that you have to that you have to load. So that's uh, that's uh, that's why that's why I need it. In this case, it's not needed, but uh, because the tower it's always gonna exist in the game. I'm not, I, I don't have to spawn it, but apparently it uh, throws an error if I don't have it. So for now, I'm just gonna add it and. Uh, Uh, be done with it because theoretically I shouldn't need to to specify the type GID if I don't need it that's why uh, by default I, I don't show it if it's empty but if I add it it uh, it shows up so yeah so yeah for now I'm just gonna leave it there one thing that I'm gonna do is uh, clear the player preferences so I don't have this uh, the, the old uh, save data because uh, yeah, it's not gonna match with uh, with those new GIDs that we have now. So now, if we play, we should see the game as before. Yeah. So it loaded it. It loaded fine. And now we can go back to our game manager and save the game. And here we have it. So we have the. Let's let's get this data and let's put it in something that looks nice. Because it's kind of hard to see. Uh, let's get um, yeah, this is it. Let's plop it here and just 
yeah, it's not that much better, but it's a bit better. So this is a basic save file. You have the timestamp, which is basically when the when the save was made, and we have a list of all the entities that have been um, <coughs> that have been serialized, each with their own uh, GUID and uh, their own type GUID, and basically all the data that we saw previously. If it's if it's an active, if it's active, if the the prefab is active, uh, its position, its rotation. And the um, God damn it, the ah oh shit, the serialized data for the for each of its uh, components. Yeah. So now, so now we have the data, which is cool. What's gonna happen now? Uh, if I start the game again. It's gonna throw an error. Huh? Yeah, I'm trying to import the data before. Yep, I know exactly why this happens. Because I made that stupid change and I shouldn't have done that. Um, where did I change that? So in entity, in some entity stuff. Yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have done that. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. Nothing here. What? What did I change that? Oh yeah, in the. I think it was in in the importer. Maybe. Yeah, this one. So no, this uh, this should stay on the away because it was before and this the load phase is just separate from it because the import happens before the load phase so that when the when you load when you do the load phase you have the the data from the C file already already present in the component so basically the the problem was that I was actually I, I was uh, looking for for all the entity data uh, in the load phase but i was trying to access this uh, this array before actually loading the component so that was the problem so now we should be fine if i load this we shouldn't get any errors and we get we get a tower it's not the same tower as before because even though we have the data saved in the um, in the component, and we deserialize it back into our into our tabs. Uh, the the tower builder doesn't take this into consideration. The tower builder only saves the data, but doesn't, but never reads it, uh, reads it back. So, so so if the data is there, he will, he actually won't do anything with it. So what we have to do now is in the let's close everything. In um, in the tower builder, we'll have to add, uh, or actually we have the load phase in here, and we'll have to change the expand function, or actually make another function, not not the expand one. And uh, yeah, as you can see, so so when when we do expand. Um, we are using the modules, so we look in the modules, but we use it to to know how 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 to expand the the tower. But at the beginning, we actually want to to generate the tower with the data that we have uh, we have saved, if there are if there is data in there. So we'll have to this internal expand function. We'll have we'll have to change it a bit. We'll have to split it into two parts. So we'll have the part that spawns the actual modules and generates the composite splines, and uh, another part where we, if if we don't have modules, we generate modules for for that piece of uh, tower. So yeah. So um, generate. Um,
generate modules. Let's say let's say it like this. Uh, generate modules. And what is this gonna do is actually this. So we have this piece of code. It's gonna have this start actually both of these parameters, but without the spawn modules in here. So we don't spawn the we don't. Oh, and we don't need the roots apparently. And or the mod yeah, we don't spawn the module. And we don't need the size, well, we don't need a lot of things. Okay, so we have this. So now, after calling this function, and we can actually do it in here, I guess. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it in here. Yeah. So we would generate the modules. For the size and the start module, the current module won't actually be the s or w will it be the start module? Yeah, the current module will be the start module. That's that's the same. We are going to start spawning as before, except for we won't do this because we already have. Um, how should we do this? Actually, I think we, okay, I think we can uh, we can do this in a simple for each. So we'll have the um, tower data dot modules. So that's a module module data. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have an index. Yeah, I guess I need an index. Let's transform this in a four so that we have an index. Instead of the current module here, we have the module data. And uh, actually, that's it. No, we have to remove this plus one because we actually want to start from zero. And um, we're going to keep the roots. We are going to keep the roots. Let's move this here. And let's see. So we don't need all of this code. We need, uh, yeah, actually we needed the tower size, but the tower size is actually, this is the tower size. Okay. And we have the problem that we don't know which is the, the first module. So, and we use this in here. Okay, let's see what this, uh, what this returns. So it returns a spline tree array so let's do it like this okay so we have this let's cut that out of there it's gonna complain that it doesn't know what if, if the roots are initialized so what I'm gonna do is if we're on the first iteration the roots are actually this and I'm just gonna do a can I put an all there Yes, I can. Okay. Cool. So on the first iteration, I'm gonna generate the roots with the with the first module, and then I'm gonna do what what was done before. Okay. So we only use this once. That's nice. So this should work as before. Let's try it out. If we go here and we play it again, we should uh, we should get a tower, but it's way up in the sky. And the reason why it's why it, why it was generated way up there was because um, what is it? 
So it's here. So we have the tower size. We basically have in the in the tower we have an, we, we we loaded the data from from the from the C file, and then on top of that we we generated another ten modules. Um, so that's why it started from like ten modules up, and then it constructed a new tower. So what you have to do now is if we have data in the if we already have data loaded, we we shouldn't generate new modules. We we should use the the ones that we already have. So we're just gonna change a bit the expand. No, first, yeah, actually no. We have to change this because let's see. So right now I'm looking at the tower and see saying that if we have data. I'm not sure how, how we can do the expand function right now. Hmm, let me think. Okay, so basically what I want to do is remove this function from here. In this case, I don't even need to pass anything. And this internal expand actually doesn't even make sense anymore so I'm gonna rename it to something more suitable so spawn modules or spawn tower I'm gonna spawn the tower and here I'll have to do some type of check but um, I'll have to generate this So I'll have this. Mm, let's see. Okay. Hmm. How should we do this? Yeah, let's just look at the let's let's just uh, take it uh, back a notch. So let's just look at the at the count. If it's zero, we're gonna generate modules. If not, we're gonna use the ones that we have, and we only get a random module from the modules manager, and then we spawn the tower. And that should do it. And this same function is the one that we call in the load phase. And this doesn't make actually any sense. Ah, wait. I think I, I think I, I'll, I'll call the build function first. So let's not specify a size. Let's look at the if it's zero, I'm gonna say build me ten modules, otherwise use the count. And in here, instead of saying expand, I'm going to say build. And the build is going to do, yeah, it's going to basically look if you have modules, yeah, use how many modules. If we don't have a save file, just build me, just expand the tower with 10, 10 modules. And then in here, yeah, I have, if you have no modules, we're going to generate the modules. Actually, this, ah, this might not be good. Yeah, actually, I know, I know what the problem is. Yeah, okay. But for now, it's 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 fine because if I start now, we should get a tower. And not only that, we get a tower. 
uh, we should have the same tower each time we press play so I'm gonna make a a screenshot and let's start again and of course it doesn't look the same <laughs> what the heck why should work okay time to put some breakpoints or actually before that let's let's do another save maybe maybe I, I cleared the save and I don't remember let's do a save right here so we did a save we have the we have the indices correctly there let's start it again actually I should have took a screenshot of that um, but I can't remember so it's a helix at the top and another two helixes before that let's see if we get the same thing no okay so so the so the loading part doesn't work or something from from there doesn't work okay let's let's look at this let's look at this actually actually now that I think about it sh should it work um let's look at the loader from what i remember the loader should do the i mean yeah so you have the basic uh, if it has a save it's gonna load it before it starts loading any loadables this hasn't screamed because we don't have any anything in the console so it should have imported everything Okay, let's put some breakpoints. Um, let's see, where should we start? Let's start here, because so, this is the the entry point. So let's look at this. If we get here and we have data, that's gonna be very weird that we we can't use it. But yeah, let's start from there. Let's see if we if someone calls that method. And of course, I haven't attached the editor so we don't get anything okay now let's try it again okay so we have a hit so we have our 10 modules all the indexes we have the modules manager which it does make sense so if if we have the data, what? Actually, actually, you know that I think about it. Yeah, the, the data worked because we had that uh, tower that started from way above the origin. So yeah, this worked. So we have to look at the tower builder then. Let's look at the load phase of this uh, of the tower builder and see what happens. So let's continue this and we hit this. Okay, so let's go. Let's go inside here. So we have the tower data. Let's look at the modules. We have ten modules. We actually have the data in here, which is nice. So let's get in. We delete the tower if there's anything, and then we expand. Let's go into the expand function. Wait. Oh God damn it! I do delete before. <laughs> the delete uh, the delete function actually resets the list. So that's why I don't get anything. Okay, this delete uh, function just. Uh, doesn't make sense anymore so we're gonna get rid of it where is it yeah here because we will never need to delete uh, the modules that we already have or not in this manner not we don't want to delete the whole tower so we don't actually need that let's uh, Okay, let's try this again. Let's go here in the build. Let's put the brick mode again. And let's play. Right now we should we should get the, the modules and have everything there. So we should get the same tower that we saved. For which we don't have. Okay, so that's that part is fine. Let's go. So let's go into the build. 
we have 10 modules let's go into the expand we still have 10 modules nice so we're gonna skip the if and then we spawn the tor okay we have something so we have a tower let's make a print screen of it and try to run it again and see if it's the same it should be the same now now that we fixed it hell yeah there we go so basically what we've done we've saved the we say the modules and then we when we started the game again we, we we loaded the same tower with the same with the same modules so we have a save and load system for the game i mean more like we implemented it because it was already written but but yeah cool This is actually nice. This is actually nice. But one problem that we have now is our expand function doesn't work correctly anymore. Um, so let's say we want to expand it by 10 modules. Not only it didn't work. Uh, oh no, so it works. But um, it builds the same tower <laughs> because uh, because that's what yeah that's what we said it should do. So if we call the expand function, if if we already have modules, uh, don't generate new ones and just spawn the tower. So basically, we sp we spawn the same. Uh, the same modules on top of another yeah though what is interesting is that they they're not spawned on top of I mean they're spawned they're in the same spot like I, I was expecting um, I was expecting uh, them to be the modules to be spawned one on top of the other. Oh no! Oh no! No, it makes sense because I'm starting from from zero each time I generate new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm because I'm looking at the whole list of modules, and uh, I'm just spawning them again and again in the same position. Yeah, yeah. That you know that does make sense. So yeah, what 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 we what what uh, we would have to do is somehow. So we'd have to 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 save the um, save the save the um, modules that we have um, spawned. So so we know which modules have been spawned. So we know that yeah we have to spawn more when we expand. Is the music still going? Yeah. Okay. So we'll need another um, so this is going to be an int. It is going to be read only. And we're going to change it a bit. Okay, so we have this. Instead of saying that Yeah, instead of saying that uh we are only going to generate modules when we have none. We're going to say if um we're going we're going to generate modules if
the spawn modules equal the 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 the, the number of the modules that exist. So basically, if we spawn everything that we have, we should generate more and then spawn those. Okay. And then uh, one other thing that we have to change, we don't have, to, we, we shouldn't uh, spawn modules that we already spawn. So we should start from, uh, ah, no, it's in our data. We should do this, basically. Oh no, I'm bad. Uh, I'm stupid. This is not the place to... This is not what I wanted to change. Um, in the spawn tower I have to change this for. So instead of going from zero, we have to go from tower data dot spawn, mo spawn modules plus one. Actually plus one? So if you spawn 10, that's gonna be the length 10. Yeah, no, it's without plus one. Yeah. So we start from the last one that we spawned and uh, go up to the to the limit. So now we should have an expand function that works. Yeah, yeah, we should have an expand function that works correctly. Let's play. So we've generated the same tower. Let's uh, let me close this. And let's expand it. Let's go to the builder and let's say, okay, I want five more modules. And it did nothing. Why? Oh, yeah, it does make sense. Because uh, even though I used uh, that value, I haven't assigned anything to it. So after generating the modules I should say that the spawn modules equals to the tower size yeah yeah that should do it Okay, so let's go back to the builder and let's see one to five more modules. Ah, now this is something I can work with. There's an error. What's with this error? Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work, right? Yeah, I have to do it here, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, they still have the problem with the composite splines that we don't regenerate. But I mean, we could regenerate them now. Now that we have the modules. Could regenerate them. Hmm. But actually, I don't think we need it. So no, let, let's just keep it like this. For now, at least. Let's play it again. Let's see, tower builder. Let's uh, expand it by five. And it still didn't work. Why? Hmm. Now this doesn't make sense. So it says that we have 15 spawn modules. And we have 15 modules in the list. But where are the modules? Uh, I don't see them. Oh. Wait. They are here. 
but wait what oh what why are they there what it shouldn't be there in the sky I mean it should be just after the last one what I think that's the problem. So I'm adding the tower size when I should be adding this. Because basically that this is the this sort of the tower the tower size. So am I using it anywhere else? Yeah. Oh, so I was using it. Okay, okay, that does make sense. Yeah, so basically, the tower size right now, after I, I click expand, is the basically the, the, the original tower plus the, the modules that I've added. So when I spawn the, the new pieces, I shouldn't start from the whole height I should start from the last modules that was that uh, the last module that was spawned which means yeah no yeah, that's that's right so it's i plus the yeah I could do something um, to explain this so let's do Let's do it like this. Uh, actually, uh, this one. So that then, so that I get it when I read the code, I know why why I added that specific value. Okay, so that should do it. Or let's say new tower size. New tower size, the previous tower size. Yeah, cool. Let's try it again. Come on. Okay, so we have the tower. Let's try to expand it by five. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Doesn't make any sense. What? Oh my god, I'm stupid. I'm not iterating from zero here. So it's only, I should only set I here. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I basically doubled, I, I was doubling the value. That's why it was so up high. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm already starting from the previous tower size. So I don't have to add it again. Yeah, yeah, that should do it. Now it's gonna work. Okay, let's play this. Tower builder. Let's add five modules. <gasps> and it worked, except that it didn't because it's not the correct piece in here. And of course it's not the correct piece. It does, actually it does make sense. But yeah. Yeah, so it worked. It, it's it's in, the, in, the, in the right position. But the problem is now that we, every time we expand the tower and we need more pieces, we get a random module. But we don't want that. We actually want to do what we had previously. So let's see if I still have it in my clipboard. It would be this one, or kind of this one. Yeah, this one. So 
So I look at the at how many modules there are. If there's more than one module, I get the last one and I get a random next one. Otherwise, I get a random one from the from the list. So this should make it so that we have a compatible next module when we expand the tower. So let's see. Okay. There we go. We have one single. Let's let's make uh, increments of two and see what it does. Split in. Then, ah, oh, come on, can do better. Okay, so a straight and a split. A combine and a 180. Reverse 180 with a straight. Yeah, seems to work. A split and a helix. A combine and a 180. Yeah, seems to work fine now. Cool. It is actually cool. Let me... What's happening here? Oh. Okay. Okay, let's do some. I don't need that button anymore. Okay, let's do some more saving and see if it still loads. Some expanding and some saves. So we have this tower, let's make it. Let's add let's like ten modules on top of it. Boom. So we have twenty modules. Let's save the game. And it looks like we have all the modules in here. Which is nice. And now if we start again we should get the same huge tower. There we go. Nice. Cool. So it works. Look at those composite splines. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And let's uh, clear the player preferences and see if it still works the uh, first time. If you don't have a save file. Yeah, it looks like I have another tower. Nice. Nice. Okay, so I think I think I'm gonna stop here. So if 
I've made I've made uh, quite a bit of progress. So we have. So I've implemented the, uh, basically added the S framework things that uh, that I have, for saving and loading, and uh, and the life cycle. So now we have uh, playing and pausing for the game. So that is nice. Also, I have. I haven't showed this, but I have cool things like uh, debugging for those, so I know where the where each call came from for debugging pur purposes. But yeah, so we have this. You can create a tower. You can expand it. We can save it and load it, uh, load it back, and it works. Yeah, this is this is actually nice. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna stop uh, stop here for today. Mainly because I I'm not sure what else to do right now, or uh, I have to I have to do so, uh, I have to do some more planning about how I want to continue this and have to to think for a while. See how I can uh, create tasks from. From all the entries in the JDD. But yeah, but yeah, this is uh, this is good. This is actually nice. We have something that that works by itself. So basically, I can build this, and at least the tower is gonna show up with those those dummy enemies. But I I don't have to press anything. To to make it start or build the tower, which is nice. Okay, so yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, uh, I'm gonna stop the stream here. And uh, yeah, thanks for. Thanks for everyone that has been here and watched the stream. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna see you next uh, next Saturday with uh, with another stream. Um, I don't know. Maybe we're gonna do we're gonna start working on the weapons for the for the tower. Maybe the enemies. So should be more uh, more interactive. We're gonna see more things uh, added to the towers. So yeah, that uh, that should be fun. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks everyone for being here and uh, see you next Saturday.